As you this morning, uh, come on, somebody lift up the voice and pray. Uh, lift up the voice, uh, lift up the voice. Uh, come on, the Bible says in the book of Galatians 24. Uh, come on, the Bible says that uh, we should be thankful. Uh, we should devote ourselves. Uh, and we know today is Sunday. Uh, come on, somebody devote yourself in prayer. Uh, come on, somebody uh, be watchful. Uh, come on, Come on, somebody lift up the voice of her. Come on, tonight we are not this one, we are not here to be spectators of her. But we are here to praise God of her. We are here to magnify His name of her. We are here to live in the fear. It is bound to hide of her. Come on, somebody lift up the voice of her. Come on, tonight, today, today. Her. Come on, today must be a special day for you of her. Come on, today must be a special day for you of her. Come on, today must be a special day for you, somebody else. If you're watching us online, uh, uh, come on, begin to enter into a time of prayer, uh, a time of praises, uh, uh, a, dance, a time of thanksgiving. Uh, uh, come on, somebody, wherever you are, lift up your voice. Uh, uh, come on, dear, today we are going somewhere. Uh, come on, today the glory needs to come down. Uh, today we don't need to chase for the glory, uh, but the glory needs to follow us. Uh, uh, it's love, mercy, uh, need to follow us. Uh, uh, come on, re kataburi atayabaha. Hey, kadora mosuki atayabaha. Let her remember that I am a Basuka Payabe. Yakapoya Mosuki and the Rebeca. Come on, somebody. Hey, Karaba Suka Rebeca. Yakaraba Suka Payanabaha. Come on, people thought they had it all. People thought your money could save your life. People thought your mansion, your car could save your life. Come on, let Karaba Suka Rebeca. There's a lot of people in the hospital which they were here this morning. We they were here present to hope of God. But they don't have that privilege. Uh, they don't have that privilege. Uh, they don't have that privilege. Uh, but this morning, you and I, uh, we have the privilege to come to the presence of Jehovah God. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, come on, Re Karabasutanababaha. It's not by mistake that you are here this morning. Uh, come on, it's not accident that you are here this morning. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, hey, Hanorabasukapaya Nebeha. Le Konorabasukapaya Nebakuyatayanabeha. Come on, this one is by the glory of God. Uh, this one is by the glory of Jehovah God. Uh, come on, somebody lift up your voice. Uh, hey, Karabasuki, I tell you about 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 about. Hey, Makatiya, Lakata Repe, I tell you about 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 about. I tell you about 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 about. Come on, somebody enter in the spirit. Uh, hey, Karabasuki, I tell you about 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 about. Hey, Karabasuki, I tell you about 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 about. The Bible says we don't have to pray. Up to the Holy Spirit. Uh, come on, He is our intercessor. Uh, come on, I tell you about about about. Yeah, Makuya, La Cotoria de Borabaha. Come on, somebody, lift up the voice, lift up the voice, and begin to praise her. You begin to thank him this morning, begin to thank him this morning. Come on, somebody, hey, Karaba Sukaya Nabarabaha. Come on, this morning, don't be a spectator. Huh? This morning, don't be a spectator. Huh? Come on, this morning, open up your mouth for her. Come on, speak to him. Huh? Come on, those who are deaf and now wish they could speak. Huh? But they don't have that privilege to go for him. Huh? How about tonight? Huh? This morning, huh? come on, this morning, huh? this morning, somebody. Huh? Ah, Katuya Narabarabeha. Come on, somebody. He and Narabasu Kerebara Baraba Katayaba. Let Kataya Narabasu Kiyane. Hey, Jihava Katuya Rabaha. He and Terebasu Kapaya Rabaha. Come on, somebody. 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 This morning. Come on, be thankful, somebody. Come on, praise his name, somebody. Hey, Come on, out of your belly shall flow. Come on, let it flow. 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 We are not waiting for somebody to teach our spirit. We will not wait for a person to come to attend us. We will not wait for something good to happen before we give thanks to him. We will not wait for something bad to happen to us before we pray. 
Come on, whatever situation, whatever circumstances, whatever issue, whatever trouble, as for me and my family, as for me and my children, we will glorify his name because he's been good, good to us. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow out of your belly, shall flow. Come on, somebody, let it flow. Close your eyes and let it flow. Come on, somebody. Come on, in the next three minutes, in the next three minutes, come on, we thank him for his goodness. Hey, I would not get that million dollars before I would thank him. I would not get that billion dollars before I would thank him. I would not be ripped before I would thank him. I would not be healthy before I would thank him. Come on, somebody. Come on, in every situation, in every circumstance, in every situation. Hey, as for me and my treasure, as for me and my family, we will glorify his name. We will adore his name. We will magnify his name. Come on, KFT, wherever you are. If you're watching us, uh, hey, this morning, uh, it's all about praising. Uh, hey, come on, I'm out of Akuria, uh, from January up to now. Uh, from January up to now, uh, people got to bed. Uh, people got to bed. Uh, and they did not wake up. Uh, people went and visited. Uh, like, Father, uh, take me to this destination. Uh, and I want to come back, I'll give thanks. Uh, but they did not make it. Uh, but this morning, you and I, uh, you and I, uh, you and I, ah, kaka 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 kaka, rete 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 masu kapa ya ba, ila kata ya ni rete rete masu hepe, iya koko kodi ya te ya ba, eh maku ya da ya ba, iya kara ya ba ba ba, kama samare, iya te ya ba 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 ba, this morning ah, his glory need to come, his glory need to flow, ah, katu ya ba ya ba ya ba ya ba ya ba. Somebody, uh, come on, be in the spirit, uh, be in the spirit, uh, be in the spirit, uh, be in the spirit. Uh, come on, somebody, uh, flow, uh, flow. Hey, come on, begin to give thanks to him. Hey, come on, let's devote ourselves uh, in Thanksgiving this morning. Uh, Come on, if I have a 10,000 tongues this morning, uh, what I will do is glorify my maker, uh, my provider, uh, my father. When I look back, uh, the family that I came from, uh, but he has delivered me from that family. Uh, Come on, uh, for this morning, uh, uh, why? Uh, what will stop me? Uh, anything can stop me uh, from praising my God. Uh, hey, bada 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 Come on, take a look up. Yes, ago the situation that you are in. Come on, come on, somebody. People be in the same situation, but they, they, they will not make it. But you be in that situation, and you came out like a pure of fine gold. Come on, somebody. This morning, this morning, I don't know about you, but this morning I will glorify my maker for waking me up this morning. People die in your sleep. People die in your sleep. But this morning you are here. Hey, hey, come on, somebody. He can't do your nebasiya nebereveha. He can't do your nebasika nebereveha. He can't do your suha payaba. Come on, in the next one minute, he can't do your nebereveha. Come on, somebody. He can't payaba. He can't payaba. He can't payaba. Hey, can't do your nebasiya nebereveha. Come on, somebody. 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 
Yes, Lord, yes, Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. We are praying, asking Jehovah God for forgiveness of sin. Amen. When you read the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse number 14, the Bible says, If my people who have called me by my name will humble themselves, amen. One way is one thing that stops people to enter in the kingdom of God or receiving the presence of Jehovah God because of our disobedience, because we are not humble, amen. And therefore, the spirit will not stay with us, amen. You become too prideful, amen. See, most of us, that's our issue, amen. And this morning, we are praying, telling Jehovah God. Uh, the Bible says we should turn away, we should turn away from our wicked ways. Hide uh, Jehovah God, and we hear their voices. Uh, and therefore, this morning we want, we want God to hear our voices by, by confessing our sin to Jehovah God. Uh, Jesus. The Father, this morning I come before you. I come before you like an humble servant. This morning, have mercy. Mercy, O oh Lord. Uh, mercy, O oh Lord. Uh, yes, see, this one, you want Jehovah God to heal your land. Uh, yes, Lord. You want Jehovah God to heal your land. Uh, yes, so that any seed that you plant on your land, uh, you will harvest it. Amen. Amen. And then for wherever you are, if you're watching us, you see, you have to be in the spirit. Uh, and pray and tell Jehovah God, uh, for this morning, have mercy. Have mercy. This one, I want to encounter you. Uh, this one, I want to have a communication with you. Uh, this one, I want to have a communion with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and therefore, one thing that's stopping me from receiving the Holy Spirit uh, is my sin. Uh, and therefore, this morning, anything within me, uh, Jehovah God, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Uh, have mercy. Uh, lift up your voice uh, and begin to pray. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, come on. Begin to ask your God for mercy. Come on, you know the hidden secrets. You know the hidden sin that you do. It's my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. In the, name. in the name of Jesus. You see, there's something in this scripture. I'm not an English major, but I can tell. Uh, uh, there's a verb in this uh, in the scripture. The Bible says pray. Uh, well, a verb also is it? What's a verb? It's an action. Amen. So that means we have to pray. Amen. You see, you don't ask God for forgiveness while your mouth are closed. Why are, why are you telling me? People be telling me that, oh, they pray in your mind. Sister, it's a lie. You don't pray in your mind. You sleep. Amen. 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 So open up your mouth and pray. Yes, the Bible Lord. says pray and seek. Amen. Amen. It's an action that we have to do. See, one thing about Christian, we don't put action. We always talk, but there's no action. Amen. Amen. So then this morning, put action in your prayers. The Bible says pray. So you pray, Father, this morning I come before you. Forgive me. Have mercy. Have mercy. Yes, Lord. See, as you are doing that, putting in action. Amen. 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 So this morning, let's go by the scriptures. Amen. Amen. Uh, Father, have mercy. Yes, the Lord. The Bible says we should pray and seek. Amen. Yes, so Lord. This morning, we are seeking for the face of Jehovah God. Jesus. So this morning, I don't know what face we'll be seeking. Amen. Amen. But tonight, this morning, be here and seek for the face of God. Amen. Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. We are Come on, somebody. Huh? Let's seek for the face of Jehovah God this morning. Huh? Let Jehovah God huh? have mercy. Oh, huh? oh, son of David. Huh? Have mercy on me this morning. Huh? In the name huh? of 
of Yeshua Mashiach, the one dying the rose on the tag day. Come on, somebody. Pray. Pray and seek for the face of Jehovah God this morning. Pray and seek for the face of Jehovah God. Come on, seek for the face of God. The Bible says we should pray and seek for the face. You will hear our voice and hear our land. And therefore, this morning, oh Lord, we come to you. Come on, we stand. Seeking Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 14. Come on, somebody. See, when we read the book of Proverbs chapter 21, verse 31, the Bible says, the horses is ready, is made ready for the day of battle. My rest comes from Jehovah God. Amen. You see, we can be ready this one. We can prepare ourselves. We can go, we can do all the rehearsals. Like this one, when I came in, I saw the choir rehearsing and everything. But something that's missing, if you don't seek for the presence of Jehovah God, you will come here and sing and we just make noise and go. There will be no impact. Amen. 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 See, we can't be ready today. We can put on our best suits, our best dress, and come to the house of God. We can be ready for today's service. But there's something missing. There's some ingredients missing in this, in this, in this stew that we're about to prepare. Amen. See, we need some, we need some maggot cube. Amen. And we have to put it, spice it up. Amen. See, that's the Holy Spirit. Amen. So when we have the Holy Spirit, it changes everything. If you know that you don't have the voice to sing, 
But the moment you hold the mic, something different happens. Amen. You see, sometimes you don't have to have the voice to sing. Uh, when the spirit leaves, uh, you change everything. You change the atmosphere. Amen. Jesus. You see, this morning we are praying that Father fill this house. Jesus. Even though I'm ready to this battle. Even though I'm ready for this war. Uh, but will victory rest on you, O oh God. Yes, Lord. And therefore, I can't go. I can't move without your spirit. Uh, I can't move without your spirit. Uh, I can't move. We can't do anything without your spirit, O oh God. Uh, and therefore, this one, we are clapping our hands. Uh, yes, we, we see, this one, we need to be violent. We need to pray violent. Uh, Father, listen. It's every Sunday, anytime I walk to church every Sunday, I want God to, I want God to give me a testimony. Yes, you Lord. see, I don't want to leave here the same. Uh, even though I can come here with wearing blue, but I will leave wearing red. Like, you see, I want something. To red means fire. Amen. 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 See, I want something new. Well, you see, I don't want to come to church every Sunday and same testimony. Nah. I want something new. Yes, and this one, we want something new. Jesus. Huh? Jesus. See, we started January. It's something every day is a new thing. Huh? He said, let today be an well, extraordinary day for us. Amen. Amen. So we are clapping our hands. Uh, the Father, let your power, uh, let your presence uh, yes, fill this house. Uh, yes, fill this house. Uh, yes, so lift up your right hand uh, and say this after me. My Father, my Father. My Father, my Father. This morning, this morning, uh, and when I clap my hands, uh, when I pray, uh, say, oh Lord, uh, let your power, uh, let your presence uh, fill this house. Uh, fill every Receive right now, 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 clap your hands and begin to pray, clap your hands and begin to pray, clap your hands and begin to pray, come on, somebody, clap your hands and begin to pray, invite the spirit of Jehovah God, come on, somebody, Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Pray for the presence of Jehovah God. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Pray. Pray. Holy Spirit, uh, fill this house, uh, fill every chair, uh, fill this house, uh, fill every chair, uh, right now, uh, right now, uh, right now, uh, right now uh, come on somebody, uh, come on lift up your voice, uh, clap your hands, uh, clap your hands, uh, pull it down, uh, pull it down, uh, pull the present down, uh, pull the present down, uh, pull the presence down, uh, right now, uh, right now, uh, right now. Put the present down. Uh, lift up your voice. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, lift up your voice. Uh, hey, uh, for ya. Uh, come on, 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 pray, 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 pray. I 
Aleluya, Nerabasía, Nerabasía. In the name of Jesus. We are praying our last but one prayer. Uh, Psalm 140, verse number 8. The Bible says, Oh Lord, do not grant the wicked their hard desire and do not let their plans succeed. We are praying that, Father, anything the enemy is planning against us this morning, uh, anything the enemy is orchestrating against us this morning, let their plan be aborted. Yes, Lord. May Jehovah God confuse them. Uh, yes, Lord. May our Father confuse them. Uh, yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. 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 Say, so, oh, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. This morning, uh, as I clap my hands uh, and as I pray, uh, confuse the enemy. Uh, confuse the enemy. Uh, this morning, uh, against uh, today, uh, service, uh, right now, uh, right now, uh, lift up your voice. Uh, Begin to pray. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, hey, God, I see a fire, uh, oh Lord, do not grant the enemy. Uh, they will not grant the enemy. Uh, their wicked desire. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, lift up your voice. Uh, clap your hands. Uh, anything uh, plotting, planning against us uh, this morning. Uh, in the name uh, of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We are praying for our sisters and brothers who are coming in uh, we are praying that anything that anyone has put against them uh, may Jehovah go cancel it we yes, come Lord. against any form of accident uh, we come off we come against any form of lateness uh, in the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Uh, lift up your hand lift up your voice and begin to pray uh. come on somebody lift up your voice uh, and begin to pray uh. Come on, somebody. Come on, pray for your brothers and sisters coming in. Hey, God, I'm seeing it. Hey, God, I'm seeing it. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. We are praying for the man preacher and the woman preacher this morning, and we're praying for. The instrumentalists, the praises and worship team, the Sunday school teachers, amen. Yes, we are praying that may Jehovah God uh, give them knowledge, wisdom, understanding from above. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the and name also, of we are Jesus. also praying for ourselves that may Jehovah God give us the, the, the wisdom of understanding, amen. Yes, Lord. So that whatever they teach us, we will be able to take it in. Uh, in the name of Jesus. In lift up your voice and pray. Uh. Come on, lift up your voice and pray. Uh. Come on, lift up your voice. Uh. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Father God, we say thank you, O Lord, for yet another time in your presence, O God. We say thank you for allowing us to be in your house, to be in your presence, oh God. We thank you for everything that you've been doing this week, oh God. We thank you for our mama and our papa. We thank you that we can come to such a house that contains your presence, oh God. Father, we are not, we are not ungrateful. We say thank you, Abba Father, for allowing us to wake up this morning to see yet another beautiful day, oh God. Father, as we go into Bible studies this morning, oh God, Holy Spirit, have your way in our midst. In the name of Jesus, may the spirit of understanding and revelation have its way in our midst. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, show us the modus operandi ways of the kingdom of God through the Father's word, oh God. Teach us. Teach us. Teach us. Teach us. Father, I submit myself underneath the graces of my mama and my papa. Holy Spirit, help me. Help us understand. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Someone say amen. 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 amen.
Amen. Amen. Before you sit down, turn to somebody and say, God bless you. Uh huh. Turn to another person and say, I love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. Turn to somebody else and give them a wonderful compliment. Amen. Say, I like your hair. I like your shoes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And let's, before we sit down, let's give it up for our virtual family. Amen. Round of applause for our virtual family. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Now the next question is, are you happy? Ooh, are you happy? I'm happy. Are you happy? I'm happy. Amen. 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 I'm so excited for today's service. Amen. Virtual family, please go ahead and be a blessing by sharing this live. Be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So Amen. this month, we've been learning about kingdom service. Amen. And I apologize. Last, the last two weeks, I didn't say kingdom, so I apologize about that. You know, I heard apostles say kingdom service on Wednesday. I was like, okay, let me, make, let me also make the correction for myself. Amen. So kingdom service. Amen. So we understand that we're talking about God's kingdom here. Amen. Because there's many other services out there, but we're specifically talking about kingdom service. Amen. 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 All right, quickly, let's go to Philippians 2, verse 5 to 8, and I'll take the King James Version, please. And how many of you brought something to write with? Please raise your hands. Wonderful. Amen. And also, to who all tuned in on Wednesday, the last two Wednesdays that apostles will be teaching us about kingdom um, service? Raise your hands. All right. Let me take the photograph. Okay, I'm, I'm coming for y'all. Amen. All right, let's go ahead. Amen. Amen. Philippians 2, verse 5 to 8. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. No what? Reputation. No what? Reputation. Amen. Uh -huh. And took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So we see this scripture. Apostle taught this scripture on Wednesday. And it stuck with me. And let's go back to verse 7 very quickly before we go into today's teaching. It says, but, but made himself of no reputation. I really want us to really think about that. That Christ, Apostle said that a God, God came and turned into dust for us. And made himself as no reputation. I want you to think about that when it comes to kingdom service. It does not matter the degrees that you have. It does not matter who you are. As long as you say, I'm committed into the house of God, into the kingdom aspect of service, it stays outside. Amen. You hum we humble ourselves. We have no reputation. Amen. Even as an HOM, we have no reputation. Amen. As an AOM, we have no reputation. Amen. As a worker in the house of God, we have no reputation. So I really want, we're going to stamp this, but made himself of no reputation. Amen? Amen. So today we're going to be talking about the nature of, of the flesh and service. The nature of the flesh and service in the house of God. Amen? Amen. 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 So by the end of today's teaching, we, we will understand the, different, the difference between serving, serving in the flesh and serving in the spirit. We will learn about serving in the flesh and serving in the spirit. And we will learn to become more spiritual about our service. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's quickly go to question. What makes our service unacceptable and displeasing to God? Let's, let's have a um, dialogue. I will take our sister in the blue over there, please. Yes, please. Coming to you as well. What, makes our, what do you think makes our service unacceptable? Amen. Um, our service is unacceptable when we're prideful and we don't do it with humility. Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Let's give it off for our sister. Amen. 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 And, and pride is one of the things that we're going to deal with today. Amen. Amen. Um, our sister Ayanda. I've, I've, I've changed it up a bit. Instead of saying who wants to speak, I'm now calling. Amen. 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 <laughs> our sister. Amen. So what makes our service unacceptable and displeasing to God? Uh, praise God. Amen. I believe um, serving with pride um, 
trying to draw attention to yourself, make it all about you instead of Jesus. Amen. 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 So pride again. We're making it about pride. Amen. Our brother Benjamin. Amen. Amen. Um, one of the first stories that came to mind was uh, Cain and Abel, right? And we see that it was a heart issue. So I feel like uh, when it comes to service and when it comes to um, serving in the house of God, our heart posture is really important as to whether it's acceptable or not. Amen. 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 Let's give it up for our brother. Amen. God bless you all. Wonderful. So I hear we talk about heart posture, pride. Amen. Amen. Let's quickly go to 1 Corinthians 3, verse 13 to 15, please. And I'll take the amplified version, please. Each one's work will be clearly shown for what it is. For the day of judgment will disclose it. Because it is to be revealed with fire. And the fire will test the quality and character and worth of each person's work. Amen. Amen. If any person's work which, we, which he has built on this foundation, that is, any outcome of his effort remains and survives this test, he will receive a reward. Amen. 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 Let's, let's go back to uh, verse 13, please. And it says, because it is to be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality not the quantity, not how many years you've been serving. Come on. It says quality and character and mm. worth of each person's work. Amen? Amen? So that stands to reason that every time, it does not matter if you've been serving in the house of the Lord for 15 years, right? But if you're giving poor quality of service, guess what? God. You're not giving the best to God. Amen. And there's pride actually hidden in that. We'll, we'll talk about that here shortly. Amen? Amen? It says we'll test the quality and character of your work. Amen. Amen. So let's write this down. Every person's work must go through the fire. Every person's work slash service must go through the fire. Amen? Amen. The next point is the flesh produces works while the spirit produces fruit, which will focus on the, the, the works of the flesh today. Amen? The flesh produces works while the spirit produces fruit. And works, in, in the Greek word is igra, E-R-G-A. It means to work, toil, hard work, hard labor, and deed. Amen? The word is E-R-G-A. So that word means works in Greek. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, let's quickly go to Galatians 5, verse 16 to 21. This is where we're going we're gonna to stand today, amen? amen? Galatians 5, 16 to 21. And let's take the, I think, the New King James Version, please. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions. Jesus. Dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 So I would like our brother right there, please. What do you think this scripture is telling us? What was Paul trying to tell us here, please? Pertaining to service. Amen. 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 Um, I believe the scripture just says that, you know, as we are called to the kingdom, as we're called to the kingdom, you know, and God takes us deeper and deeper into kingdom things, like we have to put off like all the carn all the carnalities, because these are all things of the flesh. Um, so the deeper we get in God's kingdom, and for us to really inherit the kingdom, which is the prosperity of the kingdom, which is the dominion of the kingdom, which is the impact of the kingdom, we can't have dominion and carry all of this stuff. 
because it distracts us, it takes us out, and it, it causes our, it dulls our impact, it dilutes our impact. So Paul is literally just saying, like, don't be in your flesh. If you want to walk in purpose, walk in power, walk in dominion, um, walk in exploits, because you can be exploits, you can do exploits and be drunk or be worshiping idols and things like that. So you can't have one or the other. So yeah. Amen. So let me push Amen. you a little further. Amen. So would you say you can inherit the kingdom of God in the flesh, with the flesh? Um, certain levels, certain dimensions. I think that, you know, one thing that, that comes to mind is like come up hither. So sometimes we're, we're, at a, we're at a plane and we're operating like a level of the kingdom, but kingdom things go in like dimensions. So I think that, you know, change doesn't happen all in one day. So, you know, God is a merciful God. So he'll allow us to, you know, walk in certain like levels of the kingdom. But as we spend more time in the secret place, as we spend more time consecrating ourselves, we'll inherit more of the kingdom, more prosperity in the kingdom, even more dominion in the kingdom, the more we put away the, the fleshly things. So it's like gradual, I think. Amen. 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 Would somebody like to add to that? Our sister, Kira, please. I'm going to come back to that. Amen. Maybe I, did, I didn't. Okay. Sister Kira. So the question was, um, can we inherit the kingdom of God if we're walking in the flesh? Um, according to verse uh, 20, 21, it says, the, last, the latter part of it says, Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in past time, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And so the Bible tells us, according to the scripture, that it is impossible to inherit the kingdom if we're walking in the flesh. Amen. 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 Let's go to our sister and our brother. Amen. Amen. So we Amen. heard two different perspectives, but we heard the scripture. So the, the answer is that we cannot inherit the kingdom of God walking in the flesh. Amen. Amen. Also speaks of service. Amen. So very quickly, we see that um, one of the places of work, walking in the flesh is adultery, which means leaving uh, the covenant of marriage from outside intimate and, and sexual relationships. Amen. Fornication, which is sex outside of a covenant mar marriage. Uncleansliness, not walking in holiness, amen? amen. Lewdness is the lack of decency, vulgar, ungodly dressing. So it matters how we dress in the house of God, amen, especially as church workers, amen? Amen. 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 So I'm going through these very quickly, but there's, a, there's one that we're going to actually go deeper, amen? Idolatry, worshiping objects and people more than the Lord, amen? amen. That means that when you're serving God, you cannot serve anything else, amen? amen. Sorcery, I think we all know that. Believe in astrology. Some people are like, oh, I'm, a, I'm spiritual. I believe in Jesus, but I'm spiritual. But you see on their Facebook, they post these astrology things. It, it, it does not mix. Amen? <laughs> Hatred is the lack of love for others in the church. Now, let's go to this. Contentions. Amen? Write this down. Underneath contentions comes offenses. Someone say offenses. Okay. So offenses, offense means the movable stick or trigger or a trap, a trap stick, amen, a snare. Any impediment placed in the way and causing one to stumble or fall. So I'll say that one more time. Offenses, by biblical definition, it's a trap. Just like how if you set a trap for maybe like a, an animal and the animal sees the, the uh, uh, food on the, on the thing, they, they touch it, they get captured. That's how offense works. Amen? Amen? So that word, there's a word for it. It's called scandalon. S-K-A-N-D-A-L-O-N. Sure. S-K-A-N-D-A-L-O-N. Which means offense. So that's the trap that, you know, people set to capture animals. So when you look at it, Someone can be someone who causes offense. I'm going to make this sister upset today. They're setting a trap for you. Amen? So it goes back to service. So these are one of the things that causes people's services not to be accepted by God. Amen? Because let's go to quickly go to Matthew 18 verse 7, please. New King James Version. Now Jesus makes a clear statement here about people who will set up offenses. Amen? And it says, woe to the world because of offenses. For offenses must come. But woe to that man by whom the offenses comes. 
So if you're a church worker, if you're serving and you're causing offense to people in your department, guess what? Jesus just gave you a clear warning. If you set up traps for people in the house of God while doing service, Jesus clearly gives you a warning. Amen? Amen. So we must be people who don't walk around trying to create issues in the house of God through our service. Amen? Amen. Now let's go to Matthew. Excuse me. And it says, another translation says, Amplified Version says, Woe to the world for such temptations. So offense means temptations. Amen? It means temptation. I'm tempting this person to get upset. Oh, I'm making my HOM upset by showing up late. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm making my, my, my team worker upset because I, I looked at them the wrong way on, on purpose. It goes back to the heart posture. Amen? So temptations, offenses. Now let's write this down. Temptation, excuse me, offense can lead to bitterness and hatred. Let's, offense can lead to bitterness and hatred. Let's go to 1 John 3, verse 15, please. So we're, we're dealing with the flesh here. Amen? Amen? When you're walking in the flesh, it hinders your service. Amen? Everyone who hates works against his brother in Christ is at heart a murderer by God's standards. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Jesus. It says his brother in Christ is at heart a murder by God's standard. How can you be working in the same house of God and you hate the person next to you? And saying you're, serve, you're serving God. But your heart is saying something else that you hate them. How can you be an HOM or an AOM and you hate the, the people that you're, you're, you're working with? Matter of fact, you're, you're serving those people. Oh, because maybe they didn't respond right away? That could be a trap. Amen? So offense can lead to bitterness and hatred. And if we allow it to go far without repentance, it can cause eternal consequences. So we're still talking about the framework of service, but we're diving into the flesh. Things that can hinder you from receiving what God wants to um, um, give to you through your service. Amen? Amen? And offenses usually occur when someone says something too harshly, or at least they interpret it that way. So how they interpret it can also be a trap for you. Amen? Amen. Now, solution for offense. Matthew 18, verse 15 to 17, please. Now, this is going to humble all of us. <laughs> if your brother sins, go and show him his fault in private. If he listens and pays attention to you, you have won back your brother. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or more, two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear him, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Amen. 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 I want somebody to interpret that for me. Our sister right there, please. In the white. I want you to interpret that scripture for us, please. <laughs> Got to be ready. Amen. So here, that's, that's the solution for offense. Ready? Okay. Okay. So let's go to... The sister behind, please. In class. Amen? Let's interpret this scripture. It's a solution. Matthew is giving us a solution to offense here. Are we ready? Amen. Amen. So what I do understand is, uh, so from the scripture, it said, if your brother offend you, just go to him and tell him what he did. So the solu I think the solution for that is you have to uh, 
tell your brother what he did to you so that if he doesn't accept it, just tell uh, the elders from the church and everything. So just, just go to your brother and tell them what they did. Don't, just don't put it inside you. That's what I did. Amen. 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 Let's give it up for our sister. Amen. I'll take one more. Back there, please. Praise the Lord. Um, from that scripture, it shows me that you're supposed to hold your brother. If you really do love them, you hold them accountable for their actions. If they offend you, you approach them in respect and let them know that you are offended. And if they continue on to continue to either continue to offend you or not acknowledge that they offended you, you hold them accountable by telling the elders. And it just shows me that if somebody's continuing to, like, reject all of the things that people are trying to tell them, it's pride. It really is pride. And it's pride that will keep you out of the, the presence of God because pride is a work of the flesh. It's carnality. Amen. 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 Let's give it for our sister. Amen. So I want to set up a quick scenario. Let's say you're a church worker and it's your turn to maybe vacuum the, the, the sanctuary, right? And you showed up late three times, but you never reach out to your AOM or your HOM. Right, and then one of your your sister friends in, in the department comes to tell you, "Hey, sis, I've noticed you've been, you know, showing up late, da da da," and they shrug you off. What should you do in that moment? Pull them aside. Okay, our brother John, right there, please. Like you've you've been noticing. Amen. As, Amen. as it says in the scripture, that's the first part. In Verse 15, you go to your brother and sister, hey, notice that you're late, what's going on? And if they, if they don't accept it, that's the second part is to go with another brother and sister to say, hey, we're coming in love. We're not trying to offend you. We're trying to explain, hey, this is not conducive to the kingdom of God as a worker. And if they still don't accept that, that's when you, as our sister said, there may be pride, there may be other issues. And then you get an elder of the church who may may be able to discern spiritually maybe there's something else that we can't see as workers in the kingdom that they can pray about we can also go in prayer and then go from there amen amen i like that god bless you amen so we see that matthew oh one more go ahead please um one thing that i wanted to say was that um like me i think that i probably could do better with doing it in private so but also people will feel a little more comfortable with doing this if the person that's receiving it receives it in humility. So it also takes us going in respect, but then also when we go and say that, okay, this is how, you know, I've seen something or I've did some, done something to you, what did I do, that you now can humble yourself and be like, okay, well, this is what you did. So I think it takes a level of maturity. So, um, you know, we have to grow, especially in service, because as we are all working together, if I come to you with respect and say, okay, I've, I've offended you or I've done something and you cannot receive it, then how can I move forward? Do you know what I mean? So it does require a little bit of humility and maturity. Amen. Amen. I definitely agree with that. It does require humility. Amen. Amen. So we see that Matthew gives us an or, a due order of process. Amen. He says if someone does something to you, especially he's talking about in the church now, in the kingdom, these are the steps in, what you must, in which you must take. Amen. So that way you don't stay, if you've been entrapped by that offense, you, as you, you, you're the person who wanted to go, you know, tell the person, this is what I've been noticing. You're not like, you don't get upset because it was a trap. Right? Because right away, the way they received you is a trap. Right? So there's a responsibility here that Matthew is telling us what to do and how to actually dissolve offense. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. And by God's grace, we do have that order here in KFT. Amen? Amen. Now, the next thing, the next, um, thing we're going to talk about is pride. And we don't have much time, but we'll continue next week. Pride. Amen? Pride is a feeling of being better than others. Oh, maybe because I went to school for this, so therefore I'm better than you in serving and in, in doing this. Oh, I've served here the longest, so I'm better than you. And God's looking at your quality is not good. Your quality is not good. Let's quickly go to Proverbs 11, verse 2, please, Amplified Version. When pride comes, 
boiling up with an arrogant attitude Jesus. of self-importance. Then comes dishonor and shame. But with the humble, the teachable, who have been chiseled by trial and who have learned to walk humbly with God, there is wisdom and soundness of mind. Jesus. Amen. It says, when pride comes boiling up with arrogant attitude of self-importance. Remember, Jesus has no reputation. He, excuse me, he had no reputation. Amen? He had no reputation. Oh, because I'm an HOM, I can't clean the windows, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do that. Oh, because I've been serving here the longest, I can't do that. Let, some, let somebody else know we do it. If someone, if a leader in the church asks you to do something, <laughs> that's an opportunity, as the apostle said, that, that can be an opportunity for you to fill your spiritual account. But because offense and pride, oh, because I'm this, my title, and therefore we don't do it. And the Bible tells us, right, it says, arrogant is self-important. Then comes dishonor and shame. So therefore your service, God starts to see it as dishonor to him. And then shame follows. Because now we're not doing it out of place of love. We're doing it out of place of, oh, I'm important. I've put myself above people. But it says, but with the humble, the teachable, who have been chiseled by trial and who have, been, who have learned to walk humbly with God, there is wisdom and soundness of mind. So therefore, when you humble yourself, your leader asks you to do something or you're asked to do something pertaining to the kingdom and you walk with humility, guess what? God gives you wisdom and sound mind. Amen? Amen? But if we have pride in us, our service becomes dishonorable to God. It goes back to the heart posture. Amen? Amen. No reputation. That's a mindset of Christ. He had no reputation. And I really want us to focus on that scripture this week. I have no reputation in the house of God. I'm a servant of God. I'm a bond servant. I'm a slave to Christ. Amen? Amen? We have no reputation. No reputation. No reputation. No reputation. And last but not least, entitlement is produced by one walking in pride. Mm. Amen? Amen? All right, we'll stop there for, for today. We'll continue next week. Amen. Let us, let us be on our feet, please. No reputation. As you're standing, just begin to pray in the spirit. Somebody open your mouth and pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. I pray now. I pray now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And ask your spirit. And ask your spirit. To not walk in. To not walk in. The flesh. The Excuse flesh. me. Ask my spirit. Ask my spirit. To not walk in flesh. To not walk in but flesh. But in the spirit. Your spirit. And as, as I serve in your house. As I serve in your house. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody lift up your voice and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, we pray now in the name of Jesus that you will help us not walk in the spirit of the flesh, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. May we not walk in our service and go in the, with flesh, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, any form of pride, arrogance, self-importance uh, that has embodied us, oh God, we ask that your spirit take it away in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask for fresh fire, oh God, to burn every flesh out of our mind, oh God. Any self-importance, anything that will cause us uh, to give your service a lack of quality, oh God. We ask, oh God, that the fire of God will consume it now in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you, oh God, for this teaching. May this teaching permeate in our spirit, oh God. Lord, we have no reputation. We have no reputation, oh God. May we serve you and give you good quality service only in the mighty name of Jesus. We say thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Take your left hand. Rise up your left hand. Say thank you. Thank you. Take your right hand. Say Jesus. Jesus. Then put them together and give a clap offering unto God. Amen. Come on, you can shout thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You don't need to act like a stranger in your father's house. Feel free to make noise and give him glory. Hallelujah. Boast of your God. Let the person standing next to you know that you serve a very big God. Yes, Lord. Come on, make some noise in his presence. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We just want to thank you, Lord. We just want to thank you. Lord. Let me hear you say, We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We just want to, we just want to thank you for all you've Lord. done. ready to do some moving. Find another neighbor in this house. Say, my God is a big God. My God is a big God. Then find another neighbor in this house. Yep, go to another person. Say, you should be jealous, you should be jealous of the God that I serve. The God that I serve. Then find another neighbor in this house. Say, the way you look you Say the way you are dressed. The way you are dressed shows me. Shows me that God, that God favors, favors those, those he, loves. he loves. Last time, find one more neighbor. Find another neighbor. Find another neighbor. Tell that person. Say neighbor. neighbor. Say sister. sister. Say brother. Say, you better give me space. Because what God has done for me, I might just headbutt you if you stand next to me. What God has done for me, you might just get hurt. Because this praise that I'm about to release, uh, this praise that I'm about to release, somebody let out a praise. Somebody let out a praise. For all you have done and all you will do, Jesus, Abugi Waka. Come on, sing with me. Sing, Jesus, Jesus, Abugi Waka, Abugi Waka, Jesus, Abugi Waka. Oh, for all you have done and all you do. say, Jesus, Jesus, Abugi Waka, Jesus, Jesus. Your mercy and 
favor is all over me. Jesus, I'm looking at Sing it with me, say. I got my good hallelujah, Oh, I got my good hallelujah, but I eh. Your mercy and favor is all over me. Jesus, I'm looking at Jesus, Jesus, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you, Jesus, I'm looking at you. For all you have done and all you will do. Jesus, I'm looking at you. Waiting, I go give to you. Mighty God. He is a mighty Jesus. God. Jesus. 
Jesus is the mighty God. He is the mighty God. My Lord is the mighty God. He is the mighty God. All creation bows before Him. He is the mighty God. All creation bows before Him. He is the mighty God. All creation bows before Him. He is the mighty God. To go on a journey because I'm about to go on a journey all by myself, all by myself to the throne room, to the throne room of the one, of the one who made me, who made the me. throne room, the throne room of the one, of the one who carries the keys, who carries the keys, the throne room, the throne room of the one, of the one who was seated, who is seated high above, high above principalities, principalities and, powers. and powers, the throne room, the throne room of the one, of the one who breathes. Who breathes, and, the earth and the earth trembles. Somebody enter into that journey right now. Open up your mouth and give the Lord his worship. Open up your mouth and praise God. Call him by his many names. Come on, I don't hear you. Open up your mouth and adore your father. Kapali han rando livava, frene meke pendi zalava rona makapa. Yes, you can do better than that. Open up your mouth. Don't look at me with carnal eyes. Don't look at me with idleness in your heart. Open up your mouth. Worship your God. He deserves a little bit more than that. Worship your God. 
David said that I cried out to the Lord. His exhortation was on my lips. His praise was on my mouth. Let's align with men and women of God in the scriptures and let's actually enter the throne room of God. Let's enter the throne room of God. David was described a man after God's own heart. Let's align with him and partner with heaven in ascending worship this morning. Yes, all over this room, all over this room, let an outcry of worship rise into heaven. All over this room, yes, eyes closed. Intimacy with your God intimacy with your God the faithful one yes can anyone testify one who is mighty on his throne yes call him by his various names the attributes of God the many ways of the manifestations of God yes release them in this atmosphere Jesus. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh Lord, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not Thy compassions They fail not Thou hast been Thou forever will be Great is thy faithfulness Great is thy faithfulness morning by morning brand new mercies I see all I had needed thy hand had provided great is thy faithfulness Lord on great is thy faithfulness oh great is thy faithfulness hey morning by morning brand new mercies we see oh If he's did it before, he can't do it again. His name is Jesus. He's a very great God. Oh, if he's did it before, he can't do it again. His name is Jesus. He's a very great God. Oh, if he did it before, he can do it again. His name is Jesus. He's a very great God. Oh, Lord, if you've broken chains before, I trust that you can do it again. Your name is Jesus. You are called the very great God. Oh, if you've healed the sick before, I know you can do it again. Your name is Healer. Oh, you're a very great God. If you've did it before, you can do it again. Oh, your name is Yeshua, oh Lord, 
you're a very great God if you did it before you can do it again you're the miracle worker you're a very great God if you did it before you can do it again you're the protocol breaker you're a very great God oh Lord oh Lord oh Lord if you've done it before I trust that you can do it again your name is deliverer you're a very great God oh Lord if you've done it before you can do it again your name is You're a very great God And there is nothing He cannot do There's no mountain He cannot move If you have said it Then you will do it You have a track record Of keeping your word and you're not about to start doing it now there is nothing he cannot change oh there's no bondage he cannot break if he has said it surely he'll do it oh has a track record of keeping his word and he's not about to start doing it now there is nothing he cannot do oh there's no mountain 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 you can not move Mountain, move, Lord. Mountain, move, mountain, move, mountain, move, mountain, move, sing, sing. You're the mountain. I've said it if you have 
have said it, if you have declared it, if you have written it, if you have spoken it, if you have said it, oh Lord, if you have said it, solely you do it, you have a track record of keeping your word. And you're not about to start doing it now. Oh Lord, walk by it. Oh Lord, walk by it. Oh Lord, walk by it. Oh Lord, Indescribable God, we worship and adore you. You have been faithful. You are called faithful. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the Lord God who you say a thing and that is solely what you do. You don't go back on your word, oh God. As long as you decreed it, our souls trust, oh God, that indeed you would accomplish it, oh God. We honor you as that God. We reverence and worship you as that God, the promise keeper, the chain breaker, the one who can say a thing and mountains move, the one who speaks and every entity is silent. Lord, we worship and adore you. We give you all glory, honor, and praise. In this service this morning, we say you have your way. Do as you please. What only you can do is what we demand that you do in this place, oh God. That our mere lips may testify of your goodness and your mighty works. In the matchless, powerful, mighty name of Jesus. With everyone on their feet, with your hands lifted up. Let everyone say a big, big, big amen. amen. Come on, a big amen. Hands lifted up. Amen. amen. One more time, say 
Amen. The Lord bless you. you have your seats. Amen. I said, Amen, somebody. Amen. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So if you are glad to be here today, let me get some noise. Amen. 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 This house of the Lord is called Kingdom Full Tabernacle International Ministries. And we're so excited and grateful to have you all here. So on behalf of Apostle Dominic Osei and First Lady Leslie Osei, we welcome you. Amen. Amen. As you all know and see, the church is getting bigger. Amen. We thank God for growth. Amen. That's a good place to clap. Amen. And with growth comes more order. Amen. Amen. So let's please take note of the new testimony format. So today, moving forward, if you want to testify, you email the admin team at testimonies at kftchurch.com. That's testimonies at kftchurch.com. You should have your testimonies in by Friday noon. And the testimonies will be screened and we will let you know if you've been approved to testify for Sunday. Some may be approved for Sunday, and some may be approved to have your testimony recorded and put on the church social media page. Amen. Amen. If we're all in agreement, let's get a clap offering. Amen. 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 With that being said, the testimonies for today are as follows. Sister Raquel, Sister Esther, Sister Kira, Sister Mildred, Sarpong, and Sister Kain Sola. You may line up on this side, no particular order. Amen. We humbly ask that you keep the mic close so we can hear you, and you can stand at the dot in the center so we can see you properly. Amen. 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 I love you, Lord. For your mercies never failed me all my days. I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up To I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God oh, Amen. Amen. I want to thank God this past Tuesday for celebrating another birthday. Amen. Amen. I give all glory to God. I truly don't know where, I didn't know where my life was going until I encountered KFT. By the grace of God, the moment I stepped foot into this house, I knew that I was where I needed to be. And so I want to give glory to God. I want to honor apostle and prophetess. Truly, I do owe my life to them because I was going nowhere. But they saw me, they saw something in me, and they allowed me, they took me in, someone who they didn't know from anywhere. So I honor you, apostle and prophetess. And I want to thank every single person who is standing here with me today. Every single one of you who wished me a happy birthday on Instagram. People called me and were singing to me. People called me and were praying into my life. And so I honor and appreciate every single one of you. God bless you all for celebrating me and may you too be celebrated. Amen. God of vengeance has won my battle for me. God of miracles, he has won my battle for me. 
God of vengeance has won my battle for me. God of miracles, he has won my battle for me. I am a winner man, I'm a winner man, he has won my battle for me. I am a winner man, I'm a winner man, he has won my battle for me. I am a winner man, I am a winner man, he has won my battle for me. I wasn't going to cry, but okay. <sighs> Sorry. December 18th, exactly nine months ago today, I came to the altar to rededicate my life to Christ. I indeed have been in intense labor, ready to be birthed. But like the woman in Revelation 12, 14, I, Mildred, have been given two wings like those of a great eagle, so I could fly to the place prepared for me in the wilderness. There I would be cared for and protected from the dragon for a time, times, and half a time. I spent the last year or so in depression. 22 was the most I've ever cried in my entire life. I started looking for therapists back in March, but ultimately you can't pay for peace. <laughs> Every day felt like a battle, a never-ending cycle. I wouldn't shower or eat. I would just go through the motions. Work, home, sleep, repeat. Each day was choking me. Depression sneaks up on you. By the point of realization, you feel like you're already neck deep while you're standing up. Fighting to keep your head above the water, but God, he will never let his children drown in the waters that he dwells in. May 12th was the day I realized I was depressed. May 23rd, during a ministry meeting, we were told to write our expectations for serving. And one thing I put was deliverance from depression. And on a fire night, June 10th, the day we dealt with mental health, my prayer request was answered. Amen. In January, I told God to give me, and only God can do this testimony, in regards to a car, not knowing what he had in store. Christianity felt more like bondage than freedom. The word would stress me instead of stored me. I had given up spiritually and physically, but I was committed to coming to church. The only thing fighting for me was corporate prayer. But as Romans 9, 16 says, so it is God who decides to show mercy. We can neither choose it nor work for it. When I failed the test of faith, God found me. In February, the Lord showed me I was dead spiritually through a dream. And his mercies kept me until prophets located me and exposed the devil's agenda of suicide on my life. June 29th, I was fired from my job. And though this is physically the brokest I've ever been, it's the most spiritually rich I've been. God had to literally disrupt everything around me to get my attention. Between my finances, my relationship, my internal and external circumstances, and finally my job. I felt like Elijah physically walking through the valley of dry bones. Every area of my life seemed dead. But the valley of depression was my entryway to the light. I thank God for that season. It propelled me into the light truly. The same pit the devil tried to place me in is the same pit that highlighted me. This isn't the same story for everyone, but for me, out of the dark pit, my spiritual eyes have opened. It wasn't until two months ago where I started to boldly say I could hear the Holy Spirit for myself. And since then, spiritual things have been happening for me speedily. Questions I used to ask people, people now come and ask me. What the enemy intended for harm, God intended for good. In the pit is where he will find you. Though I didn't acknowledge him, he strengthened me. He has sent me personal angels. Since the day of my deliverance, Brother Kenny has taken me under his wing. He became a point of refuge and ultimately brought me to the point I'm at today. By the grace of God, through him, I was able to finally have hope restored in July. 
God has revealed himself to me personally as El Yashiv, the restorer, and El Roy, the one who sees. He chose to lift me up in the midst of people. He chose to lift me up in the midst of people right before we entered our Elam. I couldn't take my Egypt into our Elam. Today, God has graced me to turn 23. But this isn't about me. This testimony is overdue, but I chose today to birth it because I knew the deliverance was just the beginning. Thank you, prophetess and apostle. You both truly are our battle axes. Thank you for all that you do in the community you've cultivated. A community where people will gift you, make sure you're never hungry, pour into you, come and clean your room for you, send you money, stand with you, check, on, check in on you, and fund your whole birthday for you. This new chapter, I'm declaring that I am not just 23, but I am 23 and free. In the in the name of Jesus, amen. You've been faithful, Lord, from the ages past. That is why your name is for. I just want to come up. It's been a long time since I publicly came up and testified. But today I thought that I would come up and testify that the Lord's mercy has indeed located me. In 2016, I was in somewhere that I had no business being. And then in 2018, God aligned me with my destiny helpers, apostle and prophetess. And by the, yes, that's a good place to clap. Amen. When I came in contact with Apostle and Prophetess, my entire life has changed. The girl that you see today is literally a whole different person. And by the grace of God, because of my alignment with KFT, because of my alignment and my submission under my destiny helpers, the Lord has healed me yet again. Amen. If I had not come into alignment, been obedient, I would have been dead in Florida. The enemy has tried to take me out so many times. But the Lord, through his grace and mercy, literally allowed for me to be healed. And so I just want to stand here publicly and tell God thank you. I want to thank God and I want to honor God for apostle and prophetess because if it was not for them, the, the, their yes, their obedience, they have loved me back to life. They have indeed loved me back to life. And because of the hearts that they have for God, because God has given them a heart for Shakira, he saw me. I am indeed in a different place and I'm healed by the grace of God. So just give God thanks for me. Amen. Amen. First, we'd like to thank God for Travel Mercies. Uh, my husband and his team have allowed us to be able to go over there. They have walked with me, protecting me while I was here. Thank you, Travel Mercies. Yeah. We'd like to thank God for adding another year to my life. Yeah. Amen. She's been a faithful God to us. Celebrate my year ever since I've been here. Every year has been different. I've got it to celebrate it in a different way each year. Last year I didn't get to celebrate it at all. This year I celebrate in a new season. And I can't thank God enough for what he's doing in my life and in our life. We thank everybody here who called me, who texted me, just prayed for me. It's, it's been a blessing. I didn't do anything special for my birthday, but just to be at home and at peace. We lastly want to thank God for seeing us through one year of marriage. Yeah. Amen. 
it feels like it was just yesterday I was in the back at 215 Warren for what I'm standing here today for. So we thank God. Um, I don't always get it right, but I'm thankful that I get to experience what a good, healthy marriage is. I thank our leaders, Apostle and First Lady Cousin Prater, for warring for me, for mentioning my name and my husband's name specifically in prayer, for just being there for us, for every random text message, Apostle, every random hug, every random prayer you've sent me, it's just has brought me where we're standing. Honor my husband for honoring me. Like I said, I don't always get it right. I make mistakes. I make it go left, but <laughs> he wakes up every day and he chooses me to still be his, his wife. So I'm thankful for that. So we thank God for all that he's doing for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm just here to testify to the goodness of God. Quick backstory. Um, last year, May, the Friday of Prayer Fest, I lost my job. And I was a little confused because I just got hired in March. I testified in May. I lost it. No explanation. Um, I went a whole year plus without working. I did my master's program. No work. After my master's program, I was applying to jobs. I'm like, oh, it's going to be easy. You know, I'm going to be fine. 23 jobs. Every job said no. There's a job I went for for an offer. They offered me the job. Then they took it back. I'm like, something is wrong somewhere. Mid-year fast, I decided to go into dry fasting. I don't know how I did it, but the Lord helped me. By the grace of God, I'm testifying today that I am now employed in a resident of Connecticut. Amen. It really could only be God. It, it, really could, it really could only be God because I don't get it. From where I was to now, it doesn't make sense. I was a girl who took medicine just to feel numb. I shot myself up so I don't want to feel anything. But to see the coins a lot today, it really could only be God. I want to thank God for Apostle and First Lady for their love, their prayers, their encouragement. Everybody who fasted, who prayed for me, who sold into my life. That one May the Lord repay them in a hundred folds in the name of Jesus. I also want to thank my mom for holding it down because there were dates I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do it. She stood by my side. So thank you, Jesus. I'm a CC resident. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this very quick because I know that we have to go. But I just want to thank God for adding another year to my life. Amen. Um, this has been one of the best birthdays. If you go back to last year, last year I was in all white and I was crying because I just came from Ghana. And they told me that I wasn't graduating. So it was like... By the grace of God, a year later. Yeah. Amen. Amen. A year later, I am a graduate. Yeah. And by God's grace, I'm an official nurse in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 By God's grace, a week before Think Pink, I took my NCLEX and I prophetically took it in Connecticut. And I told God as I'm taking it here, I know I'm going to pass and I will be a resident one day. I want to thank Apostle and Prophetess. Two years ago, Mary took, Mary took her NCLEX. We were all at the house and she opened up her results and we all knew that she passed and we were jubilating. And I was so excited because my sister had finally passed her NCLEX. 
First lady then looked at me. She said, you're next, and you're going to pass it one time. Yeah. By God's grace, I passed it one time. One time, one time, one time, one time. The exam was just, it wasn't hard. I did, I'm not going to lie, I did not study for the exam, so I didn't know how to. I did not study. I literally went and I took the exam, and it shut off at 75, and I said, what? So I think Friday, that Friday night, we came, Faye and Amma were pressuring me, check the results, check the results. I'm like, no. And then we checked it. I think Apostle them checked it. And all of a sudden, it said, you can't put your card back in. So I'm like, okay, Lord, that means I passed. And even before that, the crazy thing, that lady I told you about, my director, as I was checking the results, she randomly started calling me. So I was like, Lord, I don't know what's going on. And then she was like, I had a dream you passed. I said, amen. And I just left it at that. And that's when we officially checked it, I think, a week again. And it said that you passed. So I just thank God for multiple open doors. Last year I was crying, but this year I'm literally laughing. Like, And I just thank all of you guys. And I'm not even done. First of all, I'm not even done. So I think the biggest thing that shocked me like, I literally started applying when we came back from Kenya. So I'm like, God, do what you got to do because we got places to go. So, <laughs> I lit <laughs> so literally, I had an interview on my birthday, and I didn't even realize it. I went in. We started doing the interview. The recruiter was like, so how old are you? And I was like, you know what's so funny? Today's my birthday. <laughs> And she goes, okay, we're done with the interview. Here's the job. So, yes. Amen. So not only am I in a whole full year. Last year, I was making $10 an hour. If you're a CNA, you already know what we got to do. So I, was making, I wasn't making a lot. A whole year later, by the grace of God, through apostle and prophetess, my mother, my brother, I'm now a graduate, a nurse, and a whole healthcare provider all in one year. So I thank God for his faithfulness and his mercies towards me. I don't deserve it. The only thing I would say that it's really service that has really gotten me here. And I trust that it's the same service that will keep me here in the name of Jesus. God bless you all for standing with me and for your prayers. We going up, y'all. Amen. I think you can be on your feet for those testimonies. Amen. <laughs> Guys, I'm literally shaking. Almost everybody who came up here today came up last year. And we thank God for a house where the graces are working that nobody came and gave a testimony. And they're in a worse position than they were last year. Everybody who came and testified, we've just seen growth, glory to glory. It's just amazing. If that's not enough to thank God, I don't know what to tell you today. So someone, just a shout of praise, a shout of thanks. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. And let's just seal these testimonies quickly. Open up your mouth on behalf of your brothers and sisters as you're helping them seal these testimonies. You're also birthing out your own. Oh Lord, we thank you for these testimonies, oh Lord. We seal them with your precious blood, oh Lord. Lord, we thank you for the graces at work at this house that when people come to even testify about their birthdays, oh Lord, we can see growth, oh Lord. We can see your hand in their lives, oh Lord. Lord, we thank you for restoration, Both both physical and spiritual. Lord, we will never, ever, ever stop running to your house, stop shouting, stop screaming, just to say thank you, Abba Father, for all that you have done and all you continue to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. 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 At this time, we're going to take our tithe. If you have your tithe cards, we humbly ask that you come forward. Immediately after this, we're going to take our offering. So if you need an envelope, you can raise your hands. The ushers will make sure one is provided to you. So first our tithes and then immediately after our offering. And we will call upon our brother Emmanuel to pray over the tithes for us. Amen. 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 Let us make our way to the front. Amen. And this morning as we do this in obedience, 
just to exhort us that we do this in obedience. Because our Father, the one that we have modeled our life, our Christian life, the one that in the spirit is our Father, Father Abraham did it. And because he did it, we saw the blessings that came after us. And so in obedience, we do it by covenant, by understanding, by revelation, and above all things, we do it through faith. And so as you have come here, begin to pray on your tithe, lift it before the Lord, and say to him, Lord, in the spirit we know that we are children of Abraham. And as we enjoy of his blessings, we will also do the things that he did, the things that are required of us. The Lord, we know that you are the one that has provided for us. You are the source of our gain. And because of that, we come in acknowledgement that without you, there is nothing that we have. Unless you gave it to us, we wouldn't have had it. And Lord, to establish that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider, we have come before you with our tithe, O Lord, and we pray that you receive it. And in so doing, that you rebuke the devourer for our sakes, that you open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings, that there will not be room enough to contain it. Lord, Heavenly Father, we pray we thank you for providing for us, for being our source, for being our provider. We pray, O Lord, that you receive our tithe. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. You can kindly place your tithe in the bowl, amen. And if you are doing it online, go ahead and then send it in, amen. And let us be on our feet and prepare an offering as we welcome the praise and worship team. The word of God says in Malachi that in tithe and in offering, we have robbed him. And so let us offer something to him this morning, amen. Hallelujah. Let's be on our feet as we're getting ready to give God some praise while we're giving this offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I got a new song that we wanted to sing and the choir came and joined us today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you come into his presence, lifting up the name of Jesus, and you hear the music playing, and you see the people praising, just forget about your worries, let your troubles all behind you, don't you wait another minute, just get up and on your feet up. I was created, I was created, I was created. 
song make sure you give all your offerings amen amen so today we're gonna do something new amen amen so i want us to open to the book of psalm 20 see today we're about to declare on our lives speak some prophetic word on our life amen so so look at your neighbor and begin to speak that neighbor no come on neighbor as you give today psalm 20 verse 1 to 5 Oh, and I. Psalm twenty one, Psalm twenty verse one, NIV. What's true? Okay, let's read. Amen. Say, neighbor, today, as we give offering, may the Lord answer you. In the time of distress, may the Lord of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the century. May he grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifice and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart may, and make all your plans succeed in the name of Jesus. So it shall be in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 You can take the bowls. Amen. Amen. Today we've been very interactive with the neighbors, so why stop now? Ask your neighbor, are you ready for the word? Turn to your other neighbor, ask them, are you ready for the word? Amen, amen. Make sure you position yourselves well. We want to reduce all the movement. Amen, amen. 
But today the honor is not mine to introduce who's going to be giving us the sermon. But first we want to introduce our very own Papa and Apostle Shepherd over this house. Amen. Amen. It is his honor today to pave the way. Amen. So come on, you can do better for Apostle Dominic or say amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap, oh friend. He's the reason why we have got it. Amen. Today, I'm not preaching. Our first lady will be preaching, but I want to exalt you. Amen. Amen. We give God all the praise. Amen. I just want to exalt you for a minute. Amen. God has been good. Say he's been good. All the time. Now, Friday, how many of you were here Friday? And we learned about the power that is in the midnight. How the midnight hour is a very, very dangerous time spiritually to be warring instead of fooling around. Amen. Now, today, I want to just, just take a seat for a minute uh, as we... I want to exhort you in spiritual warfare so that you may have understanding in time of warfare and why we do warfare spiritually because the midnight hour is a time of warfare somebody say time of warfare so you have to understand warfare spiritually when it comes to prayer amen now you have to remember that God never called us to fight people physically we are not called to have battles physical. As much as we are called for peace. We are called to be, to love our neighbors as ourselves. But when it comes to the spiritual, things are different. And most of the time people confuse Jesus saying physical things into spiritual. When Jesus says love your neighbor, it doesn't mean that when they are doing you spiritually, you sit there and be quiet. I can love you physically, but I know what I do when I go to prayer. And people confuse that. Even when it comes to when Jesus was speaking about when you pray, go into your closet. People literally take it literal. And so they go and find a closet to pray. If that's what Jesus meant, then where was the closet in which Jesus prayed? Because in the Garden of Gethsemane, there was no closet in there. So where did he went into prayer in the closet? He was, he was speaking from the place of your mind, going into your closets of your mind where you are not able to be distracted. I can be among people and cut everybody off in prayer so that I can connect. But I can be alone and still not be, uh, be focused. And many people sitting here, although you are here, your mind is somewhere else. And so I just want to bring some light into warfare spiritually so that you don't confuse loving your neighbor and praying for your enemy than doing spiritual warfare. Because a lot of people in the church get confused. So, well, we should also pray for them. So why are we praying against them? Yeah, so that is where the problem is. Amen. Now, before that, I want us to look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Let's take some notes. It's 15 minutes and I'm done. He said, be sober, be vigilant, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a rolling lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So here, who is our adversary? Who is our enemy? Satan is our enemy. Say Satan is our enemy. So in that case, should we pray for Satan? Should we, should we say that this Satan is our enemy so let me just allow Satan to do me. Jesus said I should allow Satan to destroy my family. Jesus said I should allow my uh, Satan to destroy my job. Destroy me. So we know that Satan is our adversary. Amen. Amen. Now, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Real quick. He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So flesh and blood is not in the equation here when it comes to spiritual warfare. Our battle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against what? Principalities, against powers, 
against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in where? High places. We understand that. So therefore, the battle that we are in here on earth is not a flesh and blood battle. So if I pick a gun or a knife to go against anyone, I am wrong. Because the battle is not a flesh and blood. And so if you know that somebody is a witch and is your friend, you don't fight them physically. You don't attack them physically. You don't pick a gun and say, yeah, my, all my family members are witches. Let me kill all of them. That is not what we are commanded to do. And so if you realize that when they came to arrest Jesus, that uh, slave, um, the soldier that Peter cut his ear, Jesus rebuked him because it's not a physical battle, Peter. You got it all wrong, Peter. We are not fighting against flesh and blood here. Amen. And so don't get confused because there are a lot of people that are confusing people out there. It's not a physical battle. It's a spiritual battle. All right. Now let's jump also to Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse four. Second Corinthians ten four. He said, "For the weapons of our warfare, they are not what carnal." But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is what? Fulfilled. So here we understand that the weapon that we use are not physical weapons. In Ephesians 6, we understand that we are wrestling. So we are in a wrestling. We are wrestling here. There's a fight here. You cannot be a Christian without fight. We are wrestling. We wrestle. Bible says, for the rest, our wrestling is not against flesh and blood. But we do wrestle. We do wrestle. We do fight. And the things that we fight are principalities, our powers, our rulers of darkness, and, and spiritual hosts of wickedness in high places. And where do they operate? They operate here on this earth. But guess what? Who has the authority here on earth? In Luke chapter 10, verse 19, what did Jesus say? I'm learning scriptures explain itself. He said, Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and over all, somebody say all, all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Is principality the power of an enemy? Are rulers of darkness the power of an enemy? Are spiritual hosts of wickedness the power of the enemy? Are powers of darkness all those powers, are they under Satan's control? But who did Jesus give us authority over? Because sometimes people say, oh, well, we are not supposed to deal with principalities. When it comes to, that's not our jurisdiction. It's God's jurisdiction. It's not God's jurisdiction. As far as the day God created you and I, the jurisdiction of the earth was given to you. What happens here is what you control. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, you see, I'm allowing scripture, explain scripture. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, what does it say? Verily, very, I say unto you, whatsoever ye bind on this earth <laughs> shall be done what? So if you sit there and you don't bind, nothing happens in heaven. If you're expecting Jesus to come from, from, from heaven to come and bind for you, you will stay here till you die. Nothing will happen for you. What you say here was what heaven will honor God said well I created the earth for you whatever you allow then I will honor so when it comes to spiritual warfare your declaration is what God holds to fight and so if you want God to be the one to come and do it you are in trouble 
God does not control the affairs on this earth until we give him the legal right to do so. You, you get it? This is why he needs you and I to decree a thing. The Bible said, thou shalt, you shall decree a thing. And he will establish it. So open your mouth to declare. If something is going on, you have the authority. Remember, he said, I have given you the power and authority to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and upon all the powers of the enemy. The powers of the enemy, your adversary. So, if you rebuke, God will rebuke. If you cut, God will cut. If you destroy, God will destroy. If you bind, he will bind. Don't say, well, Jesus, can you please come and bind this spirit for me? Jesus said, well, that's not what I said in my word. I said, whatever you bind here on earth shall be bound in heaven. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10, what did he say to Jeremiah? You know the authority we carry here. Huh? He said, see, I have this day set thee over nations and over kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Did he say that he will come and plant? Did Jesus say he, Jesus, will come down here to plant for us? Did he say that he will come and root out did he say that? No. He said, Jeremiah, you are the one that I have appointed to do so. And so that if there is a spirit of witchcraft going on in your family, you are the one that I appointed to uproot it. Don't say, well, God, can you please come and uproot this witch for me? Do you know um, a testimony with uh, Papa Hagen, Kenneth Hagen? How many know Kenneth Hagen? He said one day Jesus used to visit him in his house. So on his bed, Jesus would come and sit next to me and begin to teach him the word. Some men have had encounters of Mandulala Masataya. And he'll be speaking to Jesus one on one and he is playing the scriptures. And one day, Jesus sat here and he was sitting here. And all of a sudden, a demon entered the room and sat in the middle of them. And while Jesus was speaking to him, the demon began to make noise. And so he couldn't hear what Jesus was saying. So he was expecting Jesus to rebuke the demon. And Jesus kept talking. And he wasn't hearing it. So one day he asked, and so, so as it going on, he looked at Jesus and said, I thought you should be saying something. And Jesus looked at him. He said, whatever I have given you authority to do, I will not do. The authority to rebuke devils was given to man. And he said that, ah, that is, that is not my, I've already given it to you. This is your authority. This is your jurisdiction. If you allow that demon to talk, they will keep talking. Whatever I'm saying, you will not be able to hear. Until he then rebuked that demon for there, be, for there to be quietness. And so, so there are many people that the enemy has really stepped into them, between them and God, and they are not saying it. They are expecting God to deal with it. It's a big problem with the church. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever you decide is what heaven will decide. Now, when it comes to spiritual warfare, remember when Jesus was speaking to Matthew, uh, with Peter in Matthew chapter 16, verse 23. Matthew 16, 23. He said, but he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that are of men. Now, who did Jesus was speak, speaking to? Peter. But when he turned, who did he address? So there are many people like that, that what is behind them is Satan, and you must deal with that Satan, else they will destroy you. So we don't deal with people physically, we deal with them spiritually. Paul said from hence, no, no man after the flesh. We are not dealing with the flesh here. When Jesus turned to speak to Peter, it was Satan that was speaking through Peter. But are we called to be friends with Satan? No. We are called to rebuke Satan. Bible says resist him. James chapter 5 verse 7. Resist him and he shall what? Flee. 
So you're supposed to resist and rebuke Satan. And Jesus said, oh, well, you know, Peter is my friend. Uh, we are supposed to love each other. Let me allow Peter to keep destroying me. No, no, no. Jesus turned and said, now it's a devil that is speaking through you. I need to deal with that devil. So when we go into prayer, we don't deal with physical people. We deal with the devil behind the scenes. There's a, there's a lot of demonic influence behaviors. And that is why we don't kill people. It was Rick Joyner that had a vision that it was a war between Christians and the enemy. And demons were upon the shoulders of men. Have you read that book, Rick Joyner? I think someone, I, I recommended it to Lucy to read it or somebody else. And he said he saw in a vision there was a battle Demons were literally on the shoulders of men fighting. And instead of men, instead of the people to shoot the demons, they start shooting the person. You see how the enemy works? He sit behind people and use them to fight. And so the battle is never against flesh. It is never against blood. It is a spiritual battle. So that is why he said the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God because our battle is not a physical battle. He said, get thee behind me. He did not say, let me pray for Peter. He addressed the enemy right there. Jesus, this is Jesus. This is not somebody else. This is Christ himself addressing the enemy. Get thee behind me, Satan. When was the last time you spoke to the enemy like that? For you to say, get thee behind me, that means you are speaking from the place of authority. Get thee behind me. And he gets, he didn't say, oh, well, well, Satan, can you please, can you, can you be nice in the way you speak to Satan? No, no, we are not nice, we, don't, we are not called to be nice to Satan at all. As more of a, we are not called to befriend him. Bible says he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. May you not play with him. Amen. 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 In the book of mm, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. He said, Alexander the Copper Smith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. This was judgment being declared. Now let me, let me show you something. When you look at um, also in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 6. 2 Thessalonians 1 6. Remember this one. It says, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Is it righteous? He said, it is good for God to bring judgment to those that are what? Troubling you. And when you look at Psalm 94 verse 1, look at it. Psalm 94 verse 1. He said, O Lord, unto whom vengeance belongeth. O God, unto whom vengeance belongeth. Show thyself. This is spiritual warfare. God, it is righteous for God to avenge. But it is your responsibility to call upon the God of vengeance to avenge. And so when we are doing spiritual warfare and crying out to God, we are calling upon the God of vengeance to avenge on our behalf. And remember, if I'm calling upon him and he said that whatsoever you bind is what I will do, then you, you, you can say I rebuke you, I cut you off because what I cut off is what he will cut off. I don't know if you are getting me. God is the one that answers prayer. I don't answer prayer. It is him that answers prayer. And he has given us a way to pray to him when it comes to warfare. Because he's the one that will avenge. But you must cry out. In Psalm 94, David was crying out. Oh God, it is you that avenge. Show yourself for me. And the Lord said that whatsoever you bind is what I will do. He said that whatsoever you lose is what I will lose. And so if I'm praying, I don't pray to God. God, can you please go and do this? No, I have to do it so that he will do it. So your prayer language in spiritual warfare is very, very important. Because some of you want to pray to Jesus for Jesus to come and fight the battle. But Jesus told you, it's what you do is what I will do. So in my language, I must stand in a place of authority and declare some things. 
When I'm dealing with the devil, I don't ask. I speak from authority. So whatever I want to see, I proclaim. I decree it. Thou shalt decree it and it shall be established. My job is to open my mouth to declare it and it's God's job to fulfill it. Somebody say spiritual warfare. In the next two minutes, I'm done. In Acts chapter 16, verse, Acts chapter 13, verse 6, look what Paul did. This was when they saw they were going to preach the gospel and there was a guy named Bar Jesus. And continue verse, all the way, go to verse 13 for me. And this guy was really hindering Paul and them from preaching the gospel. But look what Paul said. Amen. Go to verse 12. Sorry. Go to verse 11. Yes. As the guy was preventing the gospel from being preached, look what God there, Paul said. He said, and now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind. You shall be what? Blind and not see the sun for a season. And immediately, Paul never said, Jesus, can you come and blind this person for me? He said, you shall be what? Blind for a season. It was from a place of authority. But I thought that Paul was an apostle. Jesus said that we should pray for our enemies. Why is Paul now bringing blindness to somebody who's supposedly supposed to be an enemy? Don't take the Bible out of context here. When Jesus was addressing that, he was dealing with that from the physical point of view. We are all human beings. It was like what... Um, the man of God saw that demons were literally standing upon people's shoulders and we were killing those people. We don't kill the person, we deal with the demon. He didn't get to a point and say, Thou shalt not suffer for a witch to live. But, he, that, that. but how did that happen? He's the one that judges. We call upon him and he'll strike. So prayer, we don't go there and say, oh, my, my auntie is awake, so let me go and stab her physically. Let me go and shoot her head. No, we don't do that. We pray to the God of vengeance. And the God of vengeance will strike. But our prayer language in warfare is that we must pray from a place of authority. A place where we are seated. The Bible says, for we are seated far above principalities and powers. So your place in the spirit is above the enemy. And therefore you can speak from a place of authority. And they have no choice but to obey you. Amen. 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 Do you remember the young lady that was following Paul in Acts chapter 16? She was following Paul, Acts 16, 17. She was following Paul. And, and this lady was being nice physically. But spiritually she was an enemy. There was demons that were following her. There was a spirit of divination that was in her. Bible said, and it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masses gain. And look what Paul said. He said, and the same follow Paul as he cried, saying, these men are what? The servant of the most high, which show us unto the way of salvation. And Paul rebuked the spirit. Paul never said, well, let me be friends with this lady. When Paul grieved, Bible says his spirit was grieved and he rebuked that lady and that demon left from her. Amen. 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 So from today, know that God has called you from in a place of authority. Know that you are in charge on this earth and what you allow in prayer. So when we enter the midnight hour prayers, we are not, we are not asking for bread. It's not that time that we go and ask for bread. You see, when you're asking for bread, that one we ask God. God, can you please do this? But when it comes to warfare, God expects you to arise as a soldier. And take things and, and, and speak and declare things in authority. And as you do so, he will honor your word in the name of Jesus. He said, you are the Jeremiah of our time. Whatever you approve, he said, I have ordained you to approve, to root out, to tear down, and to plant. And so we are called to build and plant, but we are also called to approve, to tear down, and to destroy. Amen. 
And so don't think that you are only called to build. You are called to also destroy. And from today, when you enter warfare, may you have this understanding. And that you will be able to destroy whatever the enemy has set in your way. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord endow you with the grace to fight at the midnight. In the name of Jesus. May you receive the anointing of a warrior in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. May that grace come upon you. May you know how to do warfare in the spirit. May you know how to do warfare in the spirit. May you know how to do warfare in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just begin to pray in the spirit for me. Just pray in the spirit. 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 Katala basata. I kapatoli la la bakapaha. Rafatala. Mantala la basike de de bokapa. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. May this light begin to shine upon us. We come against every spirit of confusion, spirit of doubt, every familiar spirit. We are not here to befriend you, but to rebuke you. For it is written, thou shalt resist the devil and he will flee. Today, we rebuke every other contrary spirit. Anything that is not of the Lord, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And we command you to take your hands of God's people in the mighty name of Jesus. May God arise and may his enemies be scattered in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let the heavens open over us tonight, this afternoon. And may the Lord descend in our midst. May he descend in our midst. May he descend in our midst. May he descend in our midst. Let the grace of God be released. Let the anointing of God be released. Let the power of God be released. And let the word of the Lord have a free course. In the name of Jesus, we bind the principalities and powers. We bind the ground troops of the enemy. Spiritual hosts of wickedness, rulers of darkness, be arrested in the name of Jesus. And may the kingdom descend in this house. May the oil that make ministry easy, the oil that make preaching easy, may that oil be released. I say, may that oil be released in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, do your thing. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Do a new thing among us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Without wasting time, I would like to invite the prophetess, our first lady. Come on, let's welcome her. Amen. I just want you to quickly say a word to the Lord that Lord speak to me today. Revelate to me today. Give me understanding today. Let the eyes of my heart be open. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please be seated in heavenly places. Amen. I want us to give honor to whom honor is due. Our apostle Dominic, we salute you. We thank God for your life. He's been going to North Carolina preaching on Friday, coming back to preach on Sunday. And we thank God and we ask that the Lord gives him strength, that the Lord empowers him, that divine help, that he would be a beacon of hope for pastors across the globe to do the work of God in help, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yesterday we had a great time. We 
we had an extremely great time. I believe the Lord spoke to us. The Lord gave us insight. In this season, you better begin to, to pull down heaven and say that heaven, I need insight. I need revelation. I need the mysteries to be unveiled to me. This season, do not be a casualty of ignorance. The enemy thrives off the ignorance of Christians. And so if you sit there unconcerned, if you sit there in the name of, as long as I don't pray those type of prayers, the enemy won't come for me. The devil is a liar. Do not think that the enemy wants you to be happy and free. And in order to keep happy and free, full of joy, you must learn to have insight. Amen? May the Lord give you revelation. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, you know, our marriage fast is coming up. Amen. It's a marriage and destiny fast is one of the things that pull people into this church more than anything because it has yielded results, amen? We have tangible testimonies of people's lives turn or, turning around. Our sister Esther is an example. It's not only about marriage, but I look at her life and her whole life has turned around in a matter of one year, the whole life. And we give glory to God for that. And so we are all excited and I don't want us to have false zeal. False zeal where the first week everyone is excited and then we enter into the next week and then you die out. Or that is when we hear a bunch of excuses. And so the Lord instructed me and I have an assignment today to unveil some things to you that will help you on this fast, amen? And I've entitled this message, Watch So You Can Pray. The, the prayer watches of the day. If you didn't know, there are prayer watches. If you're new to the faith, if you're a baby Christian, you have to know that there are times and seasons and every time of the day, the Lord is doing something different. And every time of the day, the enemy is also doing something different. For those of you who don't know, the sun, the sun, S-U-N, we assume that the sun gives us vitamin D. Have we all heard of this? But do you know that different times of the day, the sun gives you different types of vitamins? This is God. And so if you are in need of vitamin D, if you notice, any of you who have been told that you are in need of vitamin D, the sun has to be at, I believe, 30 UV rays or something like that. That happens from the hours of about 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Most of us are where? At work. Because sometimes you look at yourself and you're like, I've been outside. But you've been outside in the morning and probably during the evening. But the times that the sun gives out vitamin D, you're inside. This is why a lot of people are vitamin D deficient. Doctor, am I, am I saying the truth? Thank you. And so you have to understand that the enemy has knowledge and he knows that different times of the day require different things. And so this is how the enemy works. So us as children of God, it is in our right to make sure we have an understanding that 6 a.m. can mean something in the realms of the spirit, 6 p.m. means something different. You cannot sit around unconcerned. This is, the, this is the issue with the church in America. They are very unconcerned. Everything is a motivational teaching for them. We are tired of motivational preaching. We need the, the unfiltered word of God. We need to know what the scriptures are saying that will save our life. If motivation could have kept us, half of us would not be in church. And so it is required that you, you discern and you, you thirst for the word of God. Amen. Amen. I want us to turn to 1 Chronicles 12, 32. 
First Chronicles 12, 32. It says, of the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, their chiefs were 200, and their brethren were at their command. The sons of Issachar had an understanding that, that the Lord operates on times and seasons. The Lord is not just there. He's a principled God. This is something I want you to make sure it's in your spirit at all times. And so some of us will yield results and some of us will sit there unconcerned and we become jealous of one another when someone has unlocked the mystery of times and seasons. So me and you can be the same age, but we're not the same grace mates. Age mates, but not grace mates. So if you envy me, you envy me for no reason. Because I have sat there and realized that this life is a life that has to be unlocked. Everything is hidden. Jesus Christ spoke in parables for a reason. Because the carnal mind cannot comprehend things. And so if you are a child of God, one of your responsibilities is to know times and seasons. You got to know when to speak, when not to speak. When to get up, when not to get up. When to go into warfare, when to go into praise. You must know these things, otherwise the enemy will have his way with you. And so God operates according to times and seasons. Today, I want to give you the different times, what to pray for, what angel is released at that time. This will help you the next 21 days. I declare this will be the most successful fasting of your life. You will not be interrupted or intercepted by the enemy because you have advanced knowledge on how to war. This fasting, I declare you will yield the most results. Spiritually and physically, you will testify that you have entered another dimension and another realm in the spirit. I pray that the Lord opens your mind to receive. And so this teaching is very straightforward. Have your notebooks, have your pens, whatever it is. So God operates according to times and seasons. The operation of God on the earth realm is governed by times and seasons. You must have that understanding that nothing just happens. Me standing here today, the reason why I took long to come downstairs, I wanted to wear a pink dress, but the dress was too big and Esther fixed it and it didn't work out well. Not realizing or even knowing that my husband had a black outfit. And you, we all know that we match all the time. And so it did not just happen that the outfit didn't work out. God is like, y'all need a new picture for October, so let me figure this out. So he figured it out for us. It seems funny, it seems frivolous, but God is so strategic and he is so meticulous about his people. And so I'm telling you, this spirit of unconcern, I don't know why that word is on my tongue, but I believe that is what most of you are operating under. The spirit of it is what it is. It is not what it is. The enemy is pursuing your life and making a mockery of you and you are sitting there in the name of it is well. It is well is a whole different revelation. I remember one day, one of my cousins, she's a few years older than me. The Lord spoke to me that when I was praying about her, and the Lord said that the enemy has literally put a knife through her marriage, that she will not get married. Hers is not, it will happen and she'll divorce. Hers was, you just don't get married. When I decided to speak to her, before I even said what the Lord had said, and I asked her, I was like, is there anybody there? Because I want us to start praying together. The spirit of religion, the spirit of unconcerned, opened its mouth through her and said, in God's time. And I told her that in God's time is now. 
God's time is now. When the Lord has people start asking you, when is the baby coming? That means the enemy has seen that the time is now. So let me let all eyes. When people start asking about your marriage, it's time. When people start asking you about graduation, they know it's time. Times and seasons. So I don't understand why people get offended when people ask them after marriage, uh, when are you having the baby? You're supposed to. Now, I don't need you all up in somebody's ovaries because you don't know what somebody is going through. But let's not be a people that is so easily offended that no one can even ask you a question. If I lay with my husband, the law and the right of God says that I should procreate. So it is not a misnomer for someone to ask me. In fact, it's supposed to propel me to get serious in prayer. When, when I see that someone is asking me the same question a few times or different people are coming around, one of you sent me a message, first lady, all of a sudden the men are in my DMs. I said, take watch. That means the real one is near. <laughs> Times and seasons. There are things God will do in the morning and there are things that he will do at night. You have to have an understanding. If you have no understanding of that, the enemy will sift you. So there was a tribe of people called the Issachars. They had understanding of what to do and what not to do. If you will dine with kings, you must know when to speak and when not to speak. If you will move with executives, you must know how to eat and when not to eat. Some of you, we go to a restaurant with you and you start eating. Chomp, 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 chomp. <laughs> but when you learn these things, you know you wait for everyone to get their utensils, even if you're hungry. So you better grab a bite before you get to the restaurant. Amen? And so God operates on these times. And he makes sure that we have understanding. So for you, 3 p.m. is just 3 p.m. But in heaven, 3 p.m. means something. And once you get that revelation, you begin to move. You begin to trace the Bible, and you notice that even midnight comes up a lot. And so it's not by chance that apostle just preached on midnight, because one of the keys for this fasting is the midnight hour. And may the Lord grace you for that. There is something spiritual. And God wants to do things quickly and speedily. And because he is a God of his word, the Bible says that his word is exalted above himself. If he said it in the Bible, this is the time that this angel comes, that means he cannot do anything else other than that unless he shows up as the God that does whatever he wants. But you must understand to bear quick results, you have to have an understanding of times. Isaiah 62, 6, it says, I have set watchmen over your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent. What a powerful scripture. Every Christian is ordained as a watchman or a watchwoman over a territory or purpose for God. And so if you're sitting here, chances are God has made you a watchman. You realize you are the one that even if you are not the most spiritual person out of your family, you are. And so God has given you jurisdiction already. And if you sit there in the name of I'm unconcerned and this is the generational things that happen in my family, the enemy will sift you. There are certain prayer points that must only be prayed at midnight for efficiency. Even if you pray them in the afternoon, the angel that is commissioned over that specific assignment will not come until then. Luke 18, 7.
And shall God not avenge his own elect, who cry out when? To him, though he bears long with them. So day and night, there are certain cries that will cause heaven to extend its arm towards you. Before I give you the watches, I'm trying to drill the foundation so you understand that I can't be sitting around unconcerned. The heavenly ordained agency for the answer of prayers is the angelic ministry. And so every time heaven wants to answer your prayer, it is through angels. And I'm drilling this in your head, and I want you to understand we do not pray to angels. We engage angels. The Lord deploys angels. This is important for me to tell you because some of you will end up praying to an angel. This is witchcraft. We are not called to pray to angels. We are called to pray to God. The angels listen to God. They are messengers. Do not pray to angels. So when you hear messages on angels, you do not pray. And so I want to begin... Like Apostle explained to us that the night in the, in the realms of the spirit, the night comes before what? Because things are conceived at night and then it happens in the day. In the realms of the spirit, it's not the day and then the night. Everything happens around 6 p.m. There are things being constructed against you. And so the next day, that is when the missiles begin to launch. And so if you didn't know, there are eight prayer watches. And these watches are literally around the whole day. And as a child of God, you must create a table where you know every watch and what it requires. And the least of you should be praying at least 30 minutes a watch. A watch lasts for several hours, but the laziest person in this house or listening to me should be praying at least 30 minutes a watch. So the first watch happens in the nighttime. And this watch starts from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. This is the watch of intercession. This is the time that if you want to effectively pray for your family, this is the watch that you pray from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Instead of watching TV, take an hour out. Take 30 minutes out. If you want and the prayer topic is extremely important for you, you desire for your, your husband to be next to you at church, you want your children to be saved, you begin to pray this watch. 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. It's the watch of intercession. The best time to pray for your children and your family. The best time to intercede for any case in your family. So there are people fighting in your family. This is the watch. Your children, you see that their sibling rivalry, this is the watch. You see that your mother and father, husband and wife, there's issues, this is the watch. From 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., you take an hour, you take the whole watch, you take 30 minutes, and you begin to pray. Because the angels that watch over this watch are the angels that respond to intercession. The angels that respond to intercession. And so you realize that once you come from work, if you know you carry this ministry of intercession, even in your socks and your trousers, you are blowing in tongues. This is the watch of intercession. In 
this watch as well is the watch of restoration. That is why the prophet says, cry out at this watch. Luke 440. When the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to him. When the sun was setting, what time is that? 6 p.m. And so anytime you saw Jesus, he taught in the morning, but he healed at night. So those of you who are desiring healing in your body, those of you who want restoration for your family, 6 p.m., that's why um, fire night, you can't afford to miss it. Because that is the watch. That is the watch we are in. Jesus always had crusades in this watch. The best time for a pastor to pray for your healing or for their church members is 6 to 9 p.m. This is when the angels of restoration come. So if you have anything in this hour, do it quick, says the Bible. This is the hour where quick healing happens. Quick restoration happens. When you have this understanding, your spirit is now alerted at that watch to begin to pray. I pray that you carry the grace to be able to keep watch for every single watch. This is the hour. I want us to go to Matthew 14, 15. Matthew 14, 15. When it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a deserted place and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. Continue. But Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And so this is the watch where provision is made. When you are in need of provision, this is when Jesus gave them food. When you are in a situation where you need Jehovah Jireh to show up, this is the watch you pray. This is the watch you begin to ask God, Lord, provide for my family and I. Because the angels are suspended, ready for dispatch, for re restoration. So if you pray at any other hour, we learned about midnight and I'll get to that. You cannot pray for provision at midnight. The angel is not allowed. It's a law. They are not allowed to come until it's their turn. I'll get into this. But remember when the angel went to Jacob and he began to run and Jacob held him. He said, the day is about to break. I got to go. So that stands to reason that the angels, they are obedient to times. And so if you don't know what angel is supposed to come, you'll miss it. You got to know these things. As a child of God, this should be a preaching that you can preach to everyone around you. This is the hour of restoration, healing, and provision. If you are in need of those things, you ask the Lord in these times. The Bible says pray without season. So you can pray at any time about anything. But for, to have speedy, speedily prayers, to have efficient prayers... You must know when and what to do. The enemy knows when to strike. The enemy operates off of times and season. From October to December, bloodshed everywhere, car accidents everywhere. This is the time of the enemy. This is the time of the enemy that if you are an open vessel, the enemy will begin to make you go crazy. And so some of your family members, if you notice, this is the time that they're going crazy. But this is the time we pray for restoration, healing, and provision. May the Lord empower you to watch this hour. 
May the Lord give you an internal alarm clock that will allow you to remember, at least let me keep watch 30 minutes of this day. Let me be able to open my mouth and pray. Even if you're tired, on your way from work, these hours, take a few minutes and begin to pray, Lord, provide for my family. I'm not meant to be a pauper all my life. Provide for us. Give me provision. Lord, begin to heal this one and that one. Lord, begin to restore my family. This is the watch. Then we have 9 p.m. to 12 p.m. So what was the first watch? Now we have 9 p.m. to 12 p.m. This is the hour. I want us to go to Luke 12, 37 to 38. Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, he will find them watching. Assuredly, I say to you that he will gird himself and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. Prophetically, do you know what this means? This is the watch of revelation and spiritual knowledge. He said, sit in this third watch and find, and I will come and I will serve them. I want us to go back to the 37. Blessed are the servants whom the master, when he comes, he will find them watching. Assuredly, I say to you that he will gird himself, have them sit down to eat, and will come and what? This is the hour of spiritual knowledge. You want to be a guru in the Bible? This is the hour you pray. This is the hour you keep watch. When it comes, the master, if you are asleep between these times, if you end up sleeping from 9 p.m. to 12 p.m., because you got to get up for midnight oil, if you sleep, you will catch powerful revelations. See, sleep, when it's done in revelation, it is good. Because this is when the, the Lord begins to uncover things. But when you sleep just to sleep and your spirit is sleeping and you are being fed all around, that's when you're in trouble. But if you sleep and you sleep with revelation like, Lord, it's only 10 minutes. I need to see something quick. Show me. This is the authority that we carry that we don't use. You can force yourself to take a nap for 10 minutes for God to unveil things to you. Some of you, God unveils it, but you still do not have an understanding of it. Job 33, 14 to 18. I told you this is very straightforward. For God may speak in one way or the other, yet man does not perceive it. So God wants to give us mysteries uncovered. He wants to speak to you. He wants to show you the arrows that are about to fly. But yet you are too carnal to perceive it. May the Lord give you insight. This watch is a watch of revelation. Visions of the night. Supplication for spiritual knowledge. This is the watch where you pray. And God shows you what is happening in your life. So you're saying that this, this, this foot issue, this knee issue is bothering me. You've went to the doctor and they said that they don't understand what is happening. When you go to sleep after praying for this watch, the Lord will show you that some enemy is sending arrows to your leg. And at midnight is where you fire them. This is the watch where God shows you these things. He unveils things to you. This is the watch where you sit and you concern yourself with the things of God. 
This is the watch where you open your scriptures and what you read is not what you are seeing. Because the Lord begins to dissect the word and now you find yourself prophetically reading the word of God and uncovering mysteries. And anyone who is a revealer of mysteries is someone God will use. So if you want God to use you, this watch, this is the watch. The next watch 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. And we learned about this from Apostle this weekend. I urge you to go back and listen. Actually, what he was just preaching here, I want everyone to go back and get it in your spirit. Because the enemy will have his way with your mind. When you begin to pray warfare prayers, the enemy will send a religious spirit your way to try to tell you that what you are doing is against the will of God. But if you have spiritual knowledge, you'll be able to stand. Some of you, because you are hitting the enemy badly with these prayers, he will send one of his agents to come and deter you. And if you don't know the word, you'll fall. Some of you at the edge of your breakthrough is when you get offended. When God is finally releasing the prayers, that is when you get offended. And you begin to say things like, why am I killing somebody? You're not killing anyone. This is spiritual warfare. So this watch is 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. These are the night watches. Remember that. This is the most important watch of the night. Judges 16.3. And Samson lay low till midnight. Till when? Then he arose at when? Then he arose at when? Took hold of the doors of the gate of the city and the two gate posts pulled them down, pulled them up, bar and all, put them on his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. This is the time that um, Samson knew that he can defeat his enemies. This is the time where you know there are spiritual witchcraft agendas concerning your life. Some of you, you, your breath stinks, but it's not a normal dental issue. It's a demonic agenda against you to make sure no one comes around you for you to be scared to go around people. This is the watch that you deal with those things. Every arrow being thrown at me, every witchcraft manipulation, every interference from the enemy. We bought little robots for my children and they all have a remote. And we realized that the remotes get twisted when another robot comes. And the Lord spoke to me and said, this is what interference looks like. You are using your robot called prayer. All of a sudden, the enemy throws a sickness, throws tiredness, throws laziness, throws offense, and intercepts what God is trying to do. If God cannot move until we pray, the enemy's agenda is to keep you shut. If he can keep you shut in offense, if he can keep you shut in laziness, if he can keep you shut in the name of I have a child to take care of, if he can keep you shut in the name of I have a job, then he's working correctly. This is the hour that most of you sleep the most, but you should be sleeping the least. Those miscarriages, back to back to back to back. The other day I was reading, a lady had 20 miscarriages, and you're still sleeping. And you think it's okay to be sleeping, especially at this watch. This is the watch where you 
take the gates. You possess the gates and you, you, you demolish the gates that the enemy has brought up concerning your life. The Bible says that we should possess the gates of our enemies. Watch and engage spiritual forces at this time. This is the watch where the highest evil is done. This is the watch where the enemy knows that even if she was sleeping at around six to nine, that she might not be in a deep sleep. But this watch right here, she's in the deepest. He's in the deepest. Let me feed him or her. And let me tell you something, when you have a dream and you're fed, if you are fed water, that is a good thing. Do not be ignorant to bind and loose everything. This is why you must know the word of God. Water is good. Water is a good thing. I'm not encouraging that you pray that you are fed. But in the event that God comes to visit you, and you wake up and you have to discern whether or not it was a good thing. Bread, water, and fruits. These are three things in the Bible. Adam was called to eat fruits and vegetables. So if you're being fed that, this is, this is like manna from heaven. Not everything is bind and loose. Some of you go into fastings that I be sitting there confused. You must understand times and seasons. That is why this fasting, there is a grace that is released. You see how excited everyone gets around this time. That is called the grace. Who gets excited to fast and pray? Who gets excited not to be able to go and do whatever they want? But the fact that people are excited means there is a grace released. So do not sit there and miss this fasting, and when we are done and people are testifying, you are now saying that, oh, I got the book, let me do it. The grace is gone. It is lifted. People do that all the time. Don't miss it. Keep telling yourself from now until October 3rd, be intentional. I'm fasting. Body, I put you under subjection. You keep telling yourself. You keep declaring it that this fast, I'm not messing up. I don't care what dream happens. I don't care who comes my way. I don't care who wants to get me upset. I'm not. I don't care who invites me to dinner. And you begin to block everyone that wants to invite you to dinner. I bind you. Stay. Because when I'm not fasting, you never call me. And some of, some of your jobs... They are literally, <laughs> some of your jobs, they have the contract from the enemy. Never want to feed you any other time. But the month of October, the month where witchcraft, that's the month that you shouldn't even be eating outside like that. That's the month you shouldn't even open up your spirit to be eating haphazardly. May the Lord give you strength and revelation. May the Lord cause you to know when to eat and when not to eat. October to December is dangerous, I'm telling you. Every time you enter your car, you better pray. If you've never prayed any other months, October to December, Lord, I cover myself, I cover this car with the blood of Jesus. Make every crooked path straight. This is the month where the enemy on the satanic calendar from October to December is deadly. Acts 16, 25. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. When you want to pray for deliverance, this is the time. Anytime you need deliverance, you see that there are some evil things happening to you. You realize that you are being violated in your sleep. You realize that people are touching you in your sleep. You realize that you are being tormented. Your child is being tormented in their sleep. This is the time. 
you realize that there's an agenda from the enemy concerning your marriage. This is the time. Some of you are laying on your beds and you've allowed a witch to sleep in between. This is the time where you set your bed on fire. Whatever contention is happening in this house, right now I set this bed on fire in the realms of the spirit. Whatever witch is laying on my bed that causes me and my husband not to commune together, not to be one, we set you on fire in the name of Jesus. This is the watch. This is the watch where you pray that Satan should not attack you. Witchcraft manifests in the daytime, but it's planned at what? Night. And so you watch for warfare. This is the season where spiritual attacks happen the most. But we cancel that in this house. We will not be casualties. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. The easiest time for the enemy to tap into your appetite is during this watch. In the natural, they say that we go into REM, R-E-M, sleep around this time. That is when you go into the deepest level of sleep. And so the enemy will come and feed you. And you wake up with fibroids, fit, um, cysts. You wake up with miscarriages. You wake up with your, your, your private parts hurting you. And you are like, how did this happen? You've been fed. You've been violated. And you had no knowledge because your spirit was sleeping. Remember when God tried to feed Peter? Even though it was God, he said no. Because his spirit was awake. And so every single time you are fed in the realms of the spirit, your spirit should be awake to know, nope, this is not from God. Get away from me. When you begin to have dreams of, of people feeding you, sexing you, touching up on you, that means you're sleeping in the realms of the spirit. And so some of you come, I need deliverance, I need deliverance, I need deliverance. Your spirit is asleep. This is the time, this is the hour where the enemy will tap into your appetite. And I'm telling you now, when you are fed in a dream like that, and it's demonic food, where you yourself can wake up and discern that something was wrong, do not eat fast. Because what the enemy will do is if he fed you chicken in the dream, he will give you an appetite for chicken. And what we do in the physical is a representation of what has been done. And so when you eat, that means you are establishing that thing. So what you do is you purge yourself through fasting. You don't eat. Not everything is an attack that should take you out of God's will for two months before you come back to church. You feed me and I realize that my spirit is sleeping, it's wartime. I wake up and now I know what to do. I'm not eating, I'm fasting. I'm purging this thing out. I'm awakening my spirit. I dare you to come back to me again. This is the hour. This is the watch. Some of you are always violated in your sleep. I don't know about you, but you, you should not be able to even touch me. I was bought at a price through Jesus Christ, but I was also dowry. He had to pay. And so you demon, how do you come? You have not paid for anything. You have not done customary rights. You have not gone to my family members and you come and violate me, then I won't sleep. I'm going to pray and fire you. Some of you men, you are being violated in the realms of the spirit. The enemy is wasting your sperm. And then you lay with your wife, and we look at the wife as barren, but it, it's you. You've allowed the enemy to tap into you. Some of you men, you are becoming weak physically because you are being violated, raped every night. 
and you are embarrassed and pompous to say it. But this is the hour where you, you stand up and say, wife, come here. The enemy is trying to take our kids away. The enemy is trying to weaken me. Stand with me and let us pray. I don't like being violated. So I get very angry. When I was coming from Kenya, I was sharing with my husband that a lady came and sat next to me. For some reason, my spirit discerned that something was not okay, but I couldn't put my finger on it. Because I understand spiritual law and I was in the heavens on the plane at that time, I said, you know what, I'm going to sleep. I need to know who this person is next to me. I went to sleep, and I'm not just talking to make you think. I went to sleep. I woke up, and the dream that I had in the sleep was a woman trying to come and touch me. And, when, and they used the face of a YouTuber that I watched her hair. And I looked at her in the dream, and I said, get away from me right now. I sent fire to you right now and she burned. When I woke up, I still could not see the lady because we all have to have masks on. When the plane finally landed 14 hours later, the lady stood up and she was a dyke. She was a lesbian and she was like a man with breasts. So in the realms of the spirit, she was trying to project but she did not know who she was projecting to. Coming to tap and drain the anointing that I went to Kenya with, trying to finish me off, the devil is a liar. There are some people the enemy should mess with and there are some people he should know better. In the dream, I began to, I literally tore her to pieces, ripped her face. When she stood up to take her bags out, when I woke up and the plane landed, big old man with breast, and she looking at me and I said, you better not even try. You gotta understand these things. Don't let the enemy come and take you out. Imagine if I've just said I finished preaching for a whole week and so my guards are down. I would have came back and the enemy would have took every anointing I had. God forbid. God forbid. 1 Kings 3.20. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me. And while thine handmaiden slept and laid it on her bosom, it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. <laughs> you see, those who sleep at midnight, you help the enemy to facilitate the destruction of your destiny. You actually are opening the door and saying, hey devil, come and mess with me. So it's not that we want a whole bunch of people on Instagram and whatever praying, because whether you pray or not, my husband and I will pray. It's because we are, we are ordained and commissioned to tell this generation the truth so the enemy will not rape you in the spirit. Some of you, the enemy has exchanged your children. I was watching, and I put it up, the lady whose son destroyed her whole house. This was a demonic exchange. You did, not, you did not pray and God did not give you a child to come and break a toilet. How do you break a toilet? A ceramic toilet, how do you break it? That can only be a manifestation of a demon. And so me, I'm telling you, all the pregnant people in this house, what I've done for the past seven years of my pregnant life is if nothing at all, while I am taking a shower, I have to pray for my kids. I have to. The one particularly in my belly. I take the shower thing and say, Lord, this is the blood of Jesus. Perfect everything that concerns my child. Any exchange, anything in my stomach that will cause them to be fought, any blood exchange, deal with it. 
I need 10 fingers and 10 toes. Look at that. How does a child do this? How does a child do this? This is the manifestation of a demon. And so if you sit there at 12 o'clock unconcerned, the enemy will come and switch your child. Look at this. Look at the toilet. How do you break a toilet? Even the muscle men can't do this. Broke everything, destroyed the house. This is a manifestation. So you cannot sit there and allow the enemy to do this. Every night before my kids sleep, religiously, so long as they are home and we are there, they have to pray. Now my daughter, she prays and she said, I deploy the angels to come and stand next to me. She said, I don't want a bad nightmare. And when they wake up, we ask each of them. And if we have six of them to ask, you and your one or two, you can ask. You ask the child, what did you dream of? What did you see in the dream? They are not too young to tell you. Because this is how the enemy begins to plant. And so we have family time. Every morning, what did you dream of? Tell me what's going on. What are the thoughts in your head? And when we ask them to pray, I know what is happening. My daughter said, I, I deployed the angels to come and stand right here next to the bed. The other day, my son said, I think I saw Jesus. Imagine your child telling you that. That is encouraging. This hour, we should not be sitting around praying. Every Christian, every Christian has a responsibility to make sure that they are praying at witchcraft, um, witchcraft hours, which is these, this is the watch. The devil won't come at 9 p.m. He knows that midnight is a new day. And so he comes to attack the terror at night. This is the time you pray for judgment concerning your enemies. In the daytime is not where you pray for judgment. Anyone who is speaking against me, this is the nighttime. This is when you deal with those people. Those people who have been pursuing you, messing with you all this time. This is the time you deal with them. While men slept. While men slept. The enemy sowed tears. Exodus 11.4. Then Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, About what time? About what time? I will go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborns in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sits on this throne, even to the firstborn of the female servant who is behind the hand mill and all the firstborn of animals. So if you are a firstborn, this is your watch. Some of you have been raised to firstborn because your siblings um, sold their birthright for stew. And so God has made you in the realms of the spirit the firstborn. This is the time you pray that every curse against the firstborn, every door that is closed for the firstborn, I deal with it. Some of you, this is the time you need to start praying for your firstborn sibling. That Lord, let me not go ahead of my sibling. I too want to be proud spiritually of my older sister, of my older brother. Lord, arrest them right now. Every spirit that is causing delay, that is resisting them, this is the time you deal with it. This is the time you deal with it. Exodus 12, 29. And it came to pass at what? that the Lord struck all the firstborns in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of livestock. The enemy is a copycat. He saw that God did it. He said, let me try it on these people. This is the time you pray. 
If you have an older sibling who is in ministry, this is the time that you can help. You pray. You say that, Lord, anything that is fighting my sister, my brother, this is the time you deal with it. The highest time to pray for judgment is this hour. You ask that, Lord, anyone who seeks my downfall, let the judgment of God come upon them. This is when you pray those type of prayers. And you see, when you pray those type of prayers, sometimes it's not you sending it to a specific person. For you, you are just throwing the arrows. Whoever it hits, it hits. It's none of my business. So if somebody has been fighting your marriage and you begin to throw these arrows and all of a sudden you hear that they are in a divorce, do not feel bad. All you did was throw the arrows and arrows knows their targets. And so when, when you see that a sickness has been overturned and all of a sudden someone around you is, is having that sickness, you shine your eye. In heaven, there are gates and angels leave at specific times. John 5 verse 4. For an angel went down at a certain time, at a what? Into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. The angels have particular times. They are not like us. We are disobedient. It takes time for us to be obedient. The angels have particular times that they are sent to come and stir waters. That is why even when we are like come and sow into the message and we say quickly it's not because we want your money it's because the angel that is attached to the message is here quickly don't wait till three days from now when your heart is like okay I think she made sense they don't want my money so let me sow you've missed the angel you know when preachers say turn to your neighbor and say whatever don't take those things lightly. Don't take it lightly. Because the Lord uses man to bless. And sometimes we ourselves don't even know why we are saying what we are saying. But it's by direction of the Holy Spirit that someone has to release that word to you. That's why you make sure you don't sit next to a witch. <laughs> don't sit next to a witch at church. The angel who came to stir the water came at a particular time. You cannot have permanent victory in spiritual warfare if you don't engage evil forces at midnight to 3 a.m. This is crucial timing. I'm drilling this in because this is one of the keys to your success in this walk. To possess the gates, you must make sure that you are not a person who sleeps too much. Set 10 alarm clocks. Tell 15 people to call you and wake you up. Say, something got to give. I come against sleep paralysis. I must be awake at these hours. I must be able to speak into the heavens concerning these hours. I must be able to throw some missiles, dismantle some car accidents, mess up some cancer reports. I must be able to do those things. And this watch is also the watch. This is the highest time to break marital delay. And so a lot of you that have been delayed, this is why sometimes it's hard to speak to some of you. It's hard to speak to some of you because the only answer my husband and I can give you is to pray. But when we tell you this, you think that we don't care. 
The grace has not been released for me to say anything else but to pray. Because how can I be praying for your marriage but you are sleeping during the time? Ruth 3.8. Now it happened that at what? I want us to read together. Now it happened at that the man was what? And he did what? And what? This is the time you battle the forces that are turning your fiance's heart away from you. This is the time where you pray against any demons that are manipulating your marriage. And so it's not in your best interest to be sleeping. I'm telling you, it makes no sense. And this Friday, you know, sometimes if we don't understand people and things, it is easy to get irritated. The whole time you guys were praying, in the beginning, I was not watching because I was preparing for Ark of Women. Then the Lord told me to pray concerning some things. Then I tuned in. When I tuned in, Apostle said something. He said, I really want to, to push this so we can pray into the midnight. As I was praying before I watched it, the Lord said that the church today, right now, they need to pray into midnight. I didn't text Apostle because I knew he had to go to North Carolina. And I'm like, I don't want him to overexert himself. But the grace really is sufficient. And the Spirit of God is one. Because the minute I turned on to YouTube, that is when he said those exact words. And I began to pray. And I said, Lord, if my husband and I's spirit is truly one, let him do it. I don't want to text him, but let him still do it. Because sometimes we think about you guys, oh, it's late, you got to drive back. But the Lord is trying to deal with some delays in your life. He's trying to deal with some things. It would be so carnal of us to come give you a motivational speech and keep it moving. When there are things in your life that are resisting you. In this ministry... We teach you and we build army. We build army. You cannot be in this ministry and be spiritually weak. One way or the other, the Lord will arrest you in your own home and you'll begin to pray and bind and loose. This is the time to pray that any demon that has been manipulating my spouse in anger, they must be arrested. You address marital delay. You don't complain. Some of you, you must understand some things, especially in marriage. If there's an issue, it's not now that, oh, he don't ever listen to me. It's a communication issue. And no, it's a demonic issue because you can be manipulated to still speak if you don't know. Remember, Satan spoke and Jesus saw that Satan was behind Peter and he said, what? I rebuke you, Satan. Get away from him. And so you saying that my spouse doesn't know how to communicate, that's just your carnal mind. You've been communicating since thy kingdom come and nothing has changed in your marriage. You arise up in prayer. Say, Lord, deal with that bad attitude of my wife. Deal with that nasty attitude of my husband. Deal with this pride issue. Deal with this anger issue. Deal with this issue for me. And then after prayer, the Lord will release you. And then your communication will sound like sweet incense to their ears. But some of you, because you are already being manipulated by anger and bitterness, that is when you want to go and sound like a clanging cymbal. When all you got to do is pray this watch. Learn how to contend in the spirit. Some of you are always having issues with your parents because you want to yabba, 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 yabba all day long. 
It has not worked. Your other siblings tried to speak. The enemy has put a, a, a device on your parents' ear that makes them think that you are disrespectful every time you speak. <laughs> it's not the time to shout and disturb. You look for somewhere and you go and you kaba and kabo. And some of you carry the spirit of religion. So now that I'm telling you to pray, that's when you will go disturb the husband or the wife that already does not want to see the prayer. No, you take a room, you go to the side, and you begin to deal with stuff. You deal with stuff. I bind and I loose this spirit that is dealing with my husband, that causes us not to be okay. Every two days, we must get into an argument. Every six days, some, some type of fight must happen. This, you go in your prayer closet. It's not the time when your husband, who's already mad with you, you now, of course he's going to be upset. You deal with things. Go, use wisdom. Move to the side. Carnal people talk a lot. Before you talk, you must make sure you pray. Before you even try to talk one hour, pray three. Before you try to go and say, let's communicate and talk about our issues, pray three hours. If you can't pray three hours, you don't need to talk to anybody. Because some of you are manipulated already with a spirit of anger and bitterness. And so the way you will even say the thing, even if it's a good point you're making, because the enemy has manipulated you already, is the attitude you're coming with will make your whatever just null and void. Someone say pray. pray. This is the, the hour that you pray. This is the hour where you engage also in praises. The Bible says that Paul and Silas, at the midnight hour, they praised. Psalm 119, verse 62. At midnight, I will do what? No, 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 no. When I'm preaching, Apostle and I are different in that style. I want you to read with me because I know the power of vision. Apostle is a teacher so he can break it down to you and it'll stick in your spirit. Me, I want you to preach with me. Let us read. At midnight, I will rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous judgment. This is the time where you strategically praise in warfare. See, there's praising to thank God. And then there's praising to say that, Lord, I thank you and I praise you that every enemy that has risen up against me has been scattered. I thank you, Jesus, that when the enemy sought to sift me like wheat, you prayed for me. I thank you, Jesus, that every hand stretched against me and my child in my womb that you have cut off. I thank you, Jesus, that everything manipulating my marriage, I thank you that it has burned to ashes in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I praise you. And you begin to praise God. You see, when you thank people in advance for what they did not do, they feel guilty to do it. If you come and you vow and you say that, First Lady, I'm going to take you out. And I come on the altar and I say, we thank God for Sister Mary. She says she's going to take me out. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. Now you are obligated. You have to take me out. This is, this is the same principle. God wants this because it provokes him to make sure that you hold on to his word and his word is exalted above him. He cannot lie. And so when you praise him strategically, then he has no choice but to do it. Engage in praises at this time. You are engaging angels to fight when you praise. This is, the aim, this is the hour that angels respond to praise and prayer. They don't respond to crying. There are other hours where you can cry. And so Fridays, that's not the time you come with your tears. You come with your weaponry on Fridays. 
fire nights, the Lord designed it for you to dismantle some things, especially when you see we're entering into the midnight hour. That's the time where you stand up. Some, some, some prayers, you lay down and you are crying out for mercy. You see, we speak to God, but we command demons. We speak to God, but we command demons. Jesus thanked the Lord, but when it came to Lazarus, he shouted, Lazarus, come out! Because every demon of death that had held him, every spirit of death had to bow to the lordship of Jesus Christ. This is the hour where you praise and you pray. It's not the hour of tears. And your tears, you don't even have revelation behind your tears. Anyone threatening your marriage, your business, your ministry, this is the time you deal with it. Any Jezebel, any whoremonger that comes to step and, and come in between your marital bed and try to defile it, this is when you deal with them. Any strong man that wants to come and take your wife away, this is when you deal with them. Then the next watch, 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. This is still the night watches. 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Lamentations 3, 22 to 23. Though the Lord's mercies, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are what? They are what? And great is his what? This is the hour or the watch where you secure the mercy of God. The angel of mercy comes from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Those who wake up at 7 and 8, you've missed the clock for mercy. You should be able to wake up at least 10 to 15 minutes. Father God, I secure mercy for me and my household today. Father God, I ask for mercy for me today. Mercy prevents bad things from happening to you. His mercies stop us from being consumed. And so anything that will try to consume you, when you pray, you have now given God permission to enter, step in, and stop you from being consumed. The angels go back at 6 a.m. And so if you wake up, at even 6.30, you've missed it. How do I know this? The physical representation of God's mercy is manna, Exodus 16 to 21. Exodus 16, 21. So they gathered it every morning, every man according to his need. And when the sun came hot, it melted. Manna is mercy. When the sun comes up at seven, when you are waking up and half of the world is already up, it says it melted. It goes away. It's time to pray for something else. And so you wake up and bad things are happening to you and you feel like you're being consumed. You sleep too much. One of the assignments tonight, take a clock, get an alarm. 30 minutes for each watch. This is what you're going to do. For the rest of your life, this is what you're going to do. As soon as the manna came, the mercy came, as soon as the sun came, the manna melted. So when you wake up at 8 a.m., you have missed mercy for the day. Even if you wake up to pray at least 15 to 30 minutes, it is better to do that and go back to sleep. Secure mercy. And then number two at this watch, you secure blessings for the day. The Bible says that we shall be blessed in our going out. And if you know, people go, people, especially in like Africa, people go out at 6 a.m. to start selling. The day starts at 6 a.m. And so when you are praying, Lord, 
Give me mercy. Mercy stops bad things from happening. Some of you, you've had mercy, but blessing you don't have because you didn't ask for it. And so the whole day, you can genuinely say, nothing bad happened to me, I thank God. But you can't tell me that you had a blessing for the day. This is the time where you secure mercy and blessings. You say that, Lord, give me your mercy and show your blessings. Let it rain upon me and my family, me and my husband, me and my children, me and my business, me and my marriage. This is the time. The blessings of the day. Genesis 32, 26 to 29. He said, let me go. For the day, what? The day breaks at 6 a.m. But he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he said, why is it that you ask me my name? And he blessed him what? And he blessed him what? This is the time you contend for your blessings. This is the time when you're looking for a visa. This is the time that if there's any job resistance, anything that you need, this is the time you begin. Lord, bless me with a job. Bless me and bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. You're looking for a house? This is the time you pray. You want the, the underwriters to begin to check you off and say that you are approved? This is the time you pray. And the Bible says that he changed his name to Jacob. This is the time you pray for promotion. This is the time you pray for promotion. When you are at work and you feel like you are being overlooked, this is the time you pray. Lord, I desire a promotion. Bless me with a promotion. Push me to another level. Graduate my life. Move me into the Israel anointing. Someone say strategy. Someone say strategy. So the first watch is intercession and the angel of restoration comes, correct? And then the second watch of the night is revelation and the angel of what? Revelation comes. The third watch is the watch of warfare and the angel of warfare and deliverance. This is when you pray for judgment. You don't pray, show me your glory, oh God. You pray warfare prayers at midnight. Now, we enter, and then the fourth watch from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., you pray for mercy, blessings. You pray that the mercy would be a shield that preserves you from evil. Favor. And then we enter into the day watches, and I'll quickly do this. From 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., this is the watch where you pray for spiritual empowerment and spiritual gifts. 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. This is the gifts of the Spirit. If you desire to prophesy, heal the sick, this is the angel that distributes gifts at this time. And so those of you who are in ministry, you are desiring that God would use you in a special way. You want to be a healer. You want God to use you in that arena. This is the time you pray. Acts chapter 2 Verse 2, it says that the Holy Ghost came. But when you go to Acts chapter 2, 15. For these are not drunk men, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the what? Day. And so that stands to reason, if the day technically starts at 6 a.m., the third day, the third um, hour of the day is between this time. In the realms of the spirit, we start the day at 6 a.m., at 12. And when you continue on for this watch, you start it. You start it at 6 a.m. And the third hour is when the Holy Ghost made them drunk. This is the time where you ask for gifts. 
This is the time where you say that, God, I desire the spirit of revelation. I can't read the Bible like a normal person anymore. God, give my tongue interpretation. I'm a worshiper. I need my songs to heal. I'm a praiser. I need my songs to deliver. This is the time you pray. Lord, I'm an evangelist. Give me the tongue of an orator that I may draw people into your kingdom. Lord, I desire to really begin to speak to people at my workplace concerning Jesus. This is the time you pray. This is the hour of the day. The highest time to see visions of heaven are between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. Think about it. After when we fast, after the 5 a.m., when you go back to sleep, that is when most testimonies come, that this is what I've seen. Heaven comes and tells you what is happening at these times. Impartation happens also at this time. Psalm 2, verse 7 to 9. We won't read it, but write it down. Impartation happens around this time. Psalm 2, verse 7 to 9. The day begins at 12 a.m., so the third hour is from 6 to what? I hope you understand. This is the time you pray for impartation. The best time to pray for your own personal healing is at this time. This is the time that there's a spiritual law, and hopefully we can do that one day, that if you need healing and you walk under the sun while you pray, you'll get healing. Wait a minute. Malachi 4.2. But to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall rise with what? See, the teacher got it. The son of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like a stall-fed calf. I'm not teaching you witchcraft. I'm teaching you Bible. See, the enemy knows these things, and so they do crazy things, but we are afraid to do it. And so the church in America is dying. And so anytime a carnal man comes across a church like this, they have so many questions. But everything I give you is scripture. Every single thing. That's why we try our best. Everything we say, a scripture to back it. The son of righteousness shall arise with healing in its wings. This is the hour you pray for your healing. Anything that has been resisting my body from serving God. He said, let my people go so, I may, so that they may serve me. Let my people go so that they may serve me. And so you begin to pray that, Lord, as you release me from this physical form, I'm going to serve you all the days of my life. We learned in Bible studies, the DMV and the North Carolina, that we are saved to serve. The reason why God took you out of the pit is to serve him. The reason why God gave you the good job is to serve him. The reason why God gave you the good marriage is to serve him. And so when you begin to use these things against God, you are designing yourself to enter back into the pit. You are only saved just so you can serve. You are not serving because we need help. You are not serving because anything. You are serving because you are saved. It's your appreciation to God. So let us change this mindset. You were saved. You were taken out of the pit. The cancer left your body. Your, your heart began to work. The kidneys worked because he needed you to serve him. And so when you're serving, do away with that mindset that they need help. I'm the only one that can do it. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Esau sold his birthright, and Jacob was right there to get it. If you don't do it, God will cause another man to do it. 
I was telling the people of Ark of Women yesterday that Catherine Kuhlman, the late great Catherine Kuhlman, she had a quote and she said that God's first choice to preach the gospel was a man. His second choice was a man. But when he realized that the men were not doing what they had to do, he called upon a woman. If you don't do it, God will call somebody else to do it. And most of the time, it'll be somebody so close to you, and you'll get jealous. God delivered me so I can serve. He took me out of six pregnancies without dying just so I can serve him. And so when I'm serving him, I'm not serving him, or I won't say I won't do it because I'm offended by what you did. What you did has nothing to do with me. You fight against me, you fight against God. I am commissioned to serve, and that's what I'm going to do. Offense cannot take me away from serving God. When you understand this revelation, you will never, ever, ever stop serving God. And as a result, you will never be in the pit. Every time the enemy is trying to push you in there, God's hand will come and leave you, and, and, and leave you out of there, take you out of there. So don't think you're doing it for anyone. 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Exodus 12, 35 to 36. Now the children of Israel had done, had done according to the word of Moses, and they asked from the Egyptian articles of silver, articles of gold, and, article, and clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. So they granted them what they requested. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. When they did this asking, it was in this watch. From 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., if you are trying to speak to your helpers, this is the time you call them. You pray and you say that, Lord... Open their hearts to connect. Entrust a blessing for me through them. This is the time where you go and in the realms of the spirit, you begin to demand that heaven should come down and visit your destiny helper to help you. This is the time. You call your destiny helper during this time and you begin to engage the angels of favor on your behalf. You ask God, Lord, deploy the angels right now so that favor could be my portion. Those of you who have interviews during this time, anytime they tell you, oh, I'll do an interview at 6 p.m., be like, nope, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., I'm giving you the times. I don't want a 3 p.m. interview. I need an interview between these times. So whatever day you got, this is the time I want. See, when you understand these things, you can command and God will allow men to comply. You engage angels of favor. We don't pray again to angels, but we engage them through praying to God. This is the watch where Jesus was also condemned to die. He was crucified at 12, but he was judged at this time. And so this is the time where you pray concerning the things of your flesh, the bad attitudes, this is the time. This is the time where you begin to say that, Lord, deal with everything, the pride, the anger, the bitterness. This is the time where you're sitting at your desk and you begin to pray. Lord, I have a bad attitude. Lord, people say I don't know how to speak. Lord, give me grace to speak. Lord, I carry a jealous spirit. You die to the flesh. You ask God to deliver you out of these things at this time. The judgment of the flesh. And you can write down Psalm 37, 6. And you can write down Mark 15, 25. Psalm 37, 6. Mark 15, 25. This is when, anytime you have been overcome by sin, those of you who like to curse people out and you feel bad, this is the time to pray and ask God to deliver you. When you realize you got anger issues, this is the time you begin to pray. Lord, deal with this flesh of mine. 
Those of you who you stick your nose up at people, you, you turn your nose down, and you think that you have arrived in life, this is the time you pray. Those of you who have issues with depression and anxiety, this is the time you pray. Those of you who got low self-esteem issues, this is the time you pray. This is the time you deal with the flesh. You engage with the power of the cross, the blood of Jesus. Say that, Lord, inject your blood in me. Cause a turnaround in my life. Cause me to walk in humility. Some of you, you don't understand that you are wearing the garment of pride. Literally, when you walk into the room, we can sense pride, not the presence of God. The presence of God comes in, and you don't have to announce yourself. People can know, wow, this is a distinguished young lady. This is a distinguished gentleman. And some of you walk in, and a garment of pride, a garment of anger, a garment of contention. So you yourself sometimes don't realize it, but it's like every day when you walk up to somebody, they got their hands up. Because it's a garment that has covered you. This is the time you deal with it. You talk to God. You ask this, any demon that will manifest through these emotions of yours, this is the time you deal with it. That jealous spirit of yours that literally on the low, you cannot be happy for anybody, this is the time you deal with it. Those of you who get mad, and you play it off like you are celebrating people, but when you go home, the thoughts in your head are telling you that it should have been you to get married. It should have been you buying the $5 million. It should have been you getting the promotion. You should be the one um, having this testimony. This is when you deal with it. 12 to 3. This is another high spiritual hour. Matthew 27, 45. Now, from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness all over the land. This is this watch, from 12 to 3. That's why we have midday prayers. Because at this time is when another realm of darkness sweeps. And so most car accidents happen between 12 a.m. and 3 a.m., and 12 and 3. Today, let me tell you, I began praying for preservation for a particular church member because I knew the time to engage. And Apostle, I don't know if you've seen the text message. The person literally messaged us and said, First Lady, I just got into a car accident. And the car, I guess, is messed up, but she is fine. The enemy knows how to engage things. <laughs> engage the angel of preservation around this time. A lot of evil that seeks to find expression in the day happens at this time. Noonday. And so we say that the noonday arrows, the arrows that fly at noonday, the frustrations that happen, the car issues that happen, they be happening around this time. Or they happen at the 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. hour. Because that's when the enemy strikes the most. Anything you couldn't catch at night, you catch at this time. You pray for preservation. You engage and deploy the angels of preservation. Say that, Lord, preserve my family. And the Lord will prompt you, now that you know these watches, the Lord will prompt you to look at the time. When you look at the time, you can discern what the Lord wants you to pray for. Yeah. Acts 10, 9. Acts chapter 10, verse 9. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up to the house top to pray about the sixth hour. This is the hour. This is the time where you engage in spiritual visitation. This is the time where Peter saw a trance when you go to the next verse. This is the time then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a what? 
This is the time where you will get the most trances. This is when God is trying to show you some things quickly. This is the time where you can't necessarily fall asleep because you've got stuff going on. But the Lord is like, I want you to, I want to show you the argument that is coming your way so you can bind it right now. I want you to, I want to show you the employee that is about to come and tell a lie on you so you can stop it in the realms of the spirit. This is the time you engage. This is the angel of visitation happens. Any dream that you dream between these hours of 12 and 3, take it seriously. If you see yourself falling asleep between these hours and you have a dream, take it seriously. This is the time where you take it extremely serious. Because that means God wants to intercept very quickly and cause a turnaround. And so sometimes he'll make you sleepy for about 5 to 10 minutes just to make sure you can see or he'll quiet your spirit and you'll enter into a trance and he'll show you some things and if you're carnal you'll say oh I just saw like my daughter it's like she kind of like fell on the floor or something I don't know but no the Lord is trying to show you that the enemy is trying to put your daughter down this is when you begin to pray the angels of visitation not intervention. This is when the Lord will come and show you. He will cause the angels to come and deliver the message of what is happening. Not necessarily to intervene, but what is happening. If you want to know why the job hasn't called you back, this is the time you engage. You engage in prayer and you fall into a trance. And then we have 3 p.m., to 6 p.m. This is when you dedicate yourself to the service of God. This is the watch, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. This is the watch of sacrifice. Anything that is resisting your walk with God, this is what you pray for. And you say, any relationship that is causing me not to come to church, any relationship that is causing me not to read my word, any hindrance, any food that I've been consuming, this is the time you deal with it. Anything that is causing you not to concern yourself with the things of God, any spirit that is causing your husband to say that they don't want to come to church, but they rather stay home and watch the Super Bowl, this is when you deal with it. This is the watch of sacrifice. When you commit yourself to the Lord, Acts 3.1 and Acts 16, 13 to 14. Acts 3.1, Acts 16, 13 to 14. In the Jewish tradition, this is the time they actually pray. Acts 16, 13 to 14. Now Peter, oh, and, the, and on the Sabbath day, we went out to the city, to the riverside where the prayer was customarily made, and we sat down and spoke to the women who met there. Now a certain woman named Lydia heard of us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Tyrata, who worshiped God. The Lord opened her heart to take heed the things spoken by Paul. You see, this is the time where God will literally send your destiny helpers. This is the watch where you begin to pray for destiny helpers. Before you ask God for people to favor you. Now this is the watch where you say that, Lord, I don't have any. I don't even have anyone to gaze my eye on. Release them to me. Release them. I have no hope anywhere besides in you. I need to see physical manifestation of what you are trying to bless me with. Cause people, some way, somehow, this is the watch you pray. Many pastors, this is the time they should begin to pray that the Lord increases the service of their church. This is the time. This is the time of the burden of the church. 
This is the time when you desire to see all these seats filled. When you desire to be a mouthpiece for God, this is the time you pray. This is the time you pray. Daniel 9.21 Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, do we, do we know who Gabriel is? He's a what? An angel. So that stands to reason that angels in the Bible never had feathers all the time. Some of them came as men. And so the Lord can release a man into your life, a woman into your life that will serve as an angel of blessing to you. The man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me at the time of the evening offering. If you don't understand, angels are very obedient. And when you pray in persistency, the angels move swiftly. Every time you pray at the angelic hour of that prayer, at that hour of, of that desired prayer point, the angel has no choice but to move what? Swiftly. To move what? Swiftly. The swiftness of an angel is a result of your consistency in prayer. So some of us, we, we don't have an understanding of time. And so our prayer life seems like it's not yielding results. If you read about Elijah when he called down fire, it was an amazing thing that he did. But if you have understanding of what he did, him and the false prophets all came together in the altar. They did what they had to do. He had understanding of the time. He knew that at this hour when I pray, the angels have to move swiftly. This particular hour, when you watch, whatever you pray for, they have to move swiftly. And so Elijah understood this concept. And so the Bible says that he did not move. He did not do anything. He watched them pray and do whatever they had to do. And then the Bible said he came and sacrificed. And at this hour, at this particular hour, is when the fire of God came down. He understood that if I can sacrifice myself, if I can sacrifice anything between these hours, the angel has to move swiftly. And so Elijah had an understanding of times. He had an understanding of the watches. Today, we are about to enter into a fast in about two weeks. The Lord wants you not to be carnally minded. This may not be the preaching that will have you on your feet stomping and shouting, but it is a preaching that will save your life. It will cause you to yield results. There are laws of prayer, and watches, times, and seasons are part of it. When you understand the mystery of watches, you see that your prayer life is effective. Today, my assignment was simple. It is to encourage you to take watch, be it 15 minutes of every watch. And sometimes the Lord will direct you on how to pray. And you yourself, if you know you have a need, now you make it your point that this watch, I must stay up to pray. I want to implore you to make a table. Create a table. Apostle and I have a book coming out by the grace of God concerning the watches. And it goes into extreme detail. But I want you to create your own table based on this message. Have it by your bedside. And anytime you wake up, anytime your spirit, have it on your phone as well. Anytime the Lord alerts you to watch what your time is, you begin to pray the watch. Pray in all dimensions. Pray all types of prayers. Pray with understanding. And the Lord will bless you. Amen. May you please be on your feet.
May God announce his purposes to you on earth. May you be a conduit of blessings. May you be a vessel that is so cleansed and ready for the master's use that you can hear him through the wind, you can hear him through the birds. We're going to pray that the Lord should open up your eyes to see and your ears to hear. That he should give you a consciousness and an awareness of the times and the seasons that you are in as a child of God. That the Lord should give you the spirit of remembrance to be able to remember these watches. I pray that you would yield fruitful results. That the angels that come would swiftly come and move on your behalf. I want you to begin to pray a prayer of thanksgiving first. Begin to thank God for this revelation. Thank God that he has opened up a door for you and a grace is released for you to fast effectively the next 21 days that are going to start in October. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to pray. Thanksgiving first. Lift up your voice and begin to thank him. Strategically thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him for understanding and revelation. Not everyone is privy to this kind of information. Just lift up your voice and begin to thank him. Lift up your voice and begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Thank him that you understand when to pray for preservation, when to pray for favor, when to move, when not to move, when to sleep, when not to sleep, when to walk. Begin to pray and thank him. To pray for spiritual interventions. Amen? Amen. It requires us to pray that the Lord would rain down his knowledge on us. It requires us to pray for preservation. It requires us to pray that any accidents that have been formed against us, we're praying that the Lord would give us understanding. We are asking for spiritual visitation. Yes, Lord. Today, as a sign that the Lord is with us, you are praying that this angel of visitation, as you sit in the car to drive back, yes, Lord. that the Lord would visit you. Yes, Lord. You are praying that, Lord, I take hold of this watch. Yes, Lord. And just as Peter fell into that trance, this is the time I desire for you to speak to me. Yes, Lord. I desire a visitation. Yes, Lord. From now until the night, yes, I want a visitation yes, from Lord. you. Show me an image. Yes, Speak to me. Let's 
somebody come and tell me something. Yes, Lord. As a sign that you are with me in this ministry, yes, visit me today. Yes, Lift Lord. up your voice and begin to pray. Come on! We need a visitation, oh Lord. Visit us, oh God. Angels, a visitation, Lord. Deploy them. Show me something. Give me clarity of my destiny.
Lord. visitation yes Lord and may the Lord unveil to you the deep things may he show you yourself may he show you the next step yes Lord may he unveil to you yes Lord may your eyes open and may you see and hear in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus receive the grace to pray at every one of the watch in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. may the grace be released may you be sensitive to pray the watches in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus may that unction of prayer that anointing of prayer 
be released over your life yes, sir. right now in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. that you will be able to stand and watch as a watchman to stand in prayer Kila Maha Tola Mazitayas Pele Mazeta Rokotozi Maha Tali Mahaza Repetala Mazata Yes Lord This is also an hour I watch for divine preservation May the Lord preserve you May the Lord preserve your home May the Lord preserve your home. I want to pray. I want us to pray for our sister, uh, Rosemary. Can you please come? We want to pray for her for divine preservation in this time of pregnancy. In the name of Jesus, that the enemy at this hour, at this season, we destroy every plan of the enemy. In the arrow that fly at this noonday. Anything that has been cooked in the realms of the spirit. At this hour, we destroy and we release her into birthing in the name of Jesus. That, be, name of Jesus. that there will be no contention spiritually. That anything that is standing there that will resist the release of this child. At this hour we destroy in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. In Psalm 94, Psalm 91, what does it say? Psalm 91, he said, what? He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Put on the screen quickly. And I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge and my fortress in whom? Yes, next verse 2. In whom I will trust, verse 3. He says, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. He said, thou shalt not be afraid by the terror, for the terror by night, and for the arrow that flyeth at where? The day. Amen. Amen. Even when they plan things in the, in the night, it manifests in the day. Amen. Amen. He said, for the pest, for not for the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, nor the destruction that wasted at this hour. And so we are praying right now that any destruction, any arrow, Wherever it was cooked from, wherever it's coming from, whoever is sending it, we are praying and destroying that arrow. And Jesus. we are praying for divine preservation upon yes, her Lord. and upon the child. Yes, and we are declaring, you see, we are declaring publicly victory over her, this yes, pregnancy. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say any arrow that has been released against our sister. In the name of Jesus, right now, we stand as a church and we destroy every demonic arrow. Right now, Satan, take your hands off her. In the name of Jesus, see, let the arrows be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed. Begin to pray, destroy every arrow. At this noon day, may that arrow be destroyed. May there be divine preservation. Rapatalias. Tulala makapan talabazata. Rapatalabazika talabaha. Rapatalabazata. Rapatalinalabaha. Ya pratalabazata. Iman tolabakapa. Rapantala Bazata, Rabantali Lalabaha, Rabantali Lalabaha, Rabantali Aso, Rabanta, Rantala Bazar, Rantolias, Simanaba, Rabantalias, Pali Lalabaha, Toliazata, Rabantala Balaba, E Kapata, Rabantali Maha, E Rantala Balaba, E Tala Talia Toliazata, let the arrows be destroyed let the plans of the enemy be aborted we destroy yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord we destroy yes satan 
Take your hands off this child. Take your hands off this baby. Take your hands off Rosemary. Take your hands off this pregnancy. In the name of Jesus. Matalabaha. Repentalia. Tula la makapa. Pali la la basa. Pali la la baha. Tula la baha. Repentance. Pali la la makapa. Pala mazata. Rima tona baha. Rababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababab
of this baby in the realms of the spirit. Yes, Lord. Any woman that is standing there and say that you will give birth and we will see. Today, today, today. May the Lord strike them. Strike! Yes, Lord. Strike whoever is behind you. Any attack over your health, attack on your mind, attack on the delivery, today we cancel that attack. Yes, and you would give birth like Hebrew woman. Yes, Lord. With the hand of the Lord on your side, Jesus. you will push this baby out. Yes, Lord. Nothing will hinder, nothing will resist. Yes, May the resistance break. Break! 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 Break every resistance. And now may the grace that has been on us in delivery. Jesus. May that grace fall on you. Yes, Lord. May we hear good news only. Yes, Lord. May you be preserved. May the child be preserved. And may it be an easy transaction. That as soon as Zion travel, she brought forth a man child. That as soon as you travel, may this baby come out. Yes, Lord. We prophesy the delivery of this child. And we declare that it will be a testimony. Yes, Lord. It will be like the Hebrew woman. As you enter the hospital, may the baby come out. Without any complications. Yes, Lord. Without any complications. Yes, Lord. You will deliver and your child will be secured. Yes, Lord. There will be no attacks. We sealed you with the blood of Jesus. Yes, Lord. We sealed the baby with the blood. And we ask that the angels will be in the labor room. Yes, Lord. To help you in delivering. Jesus. And we ask for the grace of God to come upon you. The strength of God. That will help you in pushing. We secure you and we secure the baby. Yes, Lord. Receive grace to push. Jesus. We command the spiritual atmosphere to be cleared. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, is she do yet? Now, child, position yourself Jesus. for delivery. We speak in divine authority now. Position yourself and now be released. Ah. Kadila Masata. Be released. Receive that grace now. Yes, I see a release. Mandula Lamasitalias. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Be released. So I pray for anyone pregnant in this house. Jesus. That your delivery will be easy. Yes, Lord. We come against contention. May the Lord that have stood for us. May he stand for you. Yes, Lord. And may you all have testimonies. We declare that no pregnancy will end up in stillbirth. Jesus. No pregnancy will end up in, 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 in pre, any premature death. Jesus. No pregnancy will end up with any issue. Yes, no pregnancy will end up with miscarriage. Jesus. I pray for everyone here that God will preserve your pregnancies and preserve your lives and preserve your children in the name of Jesus Amen. you are blessed and you are highly favored in this season may joy enter your family Jesus. may you and your husband be more joyful than ever and we declare that no contention will come between you that even as you give birth the testimonies of others that they have gone through postpartum depression May the Lord exempt you yes, in Lord. the name of Jesus. Name of that Jesus. it will be joy and joy and joy and joy. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Name Somebody of Jesus. give the Lord a clap of it. Come on, give the Lord a mighty clap. What a powerful word. Amen. This changes everything. It changes our prayer life forever. For you know when to pray and how to pray and what to pray. Somebody give the Lord a mighty clap. Come on, give him a mighty clap. 
Amen. Amen. And what would we say to our first lady? Oh, come on, you can do better. Such a powerful word. It was with so much understanding and clarity that you can never leave here the same. And right now, even when you miss the midnight, you know you are in trouble. And when you miss the midday, you know you are in trouble. Every prayer time that we will have, you know that you are in trouble if you miss it. It changes everything. Somebody say, it changes everything. So first lady, God bless you for such a powerful word. We've been blessed. Amen. On that note, I think we might, at this point, we might add midnight to our fasting hour. Seriously coming in. I don't know if it's possible, but the way the midnight is, the fasting actually begins on the midnight. There are people that be sleeping, eating at 3 a.m. Those days are over because your day really starts at the midnight. Amen. And so prepare yourself. This fasting is going to be highly spiritual. Oh, yeah, this fasting, we, 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 now that we got the times on lock, we, <laughs> the enemy is in trouble. We will tap into every watch and receive everything in that watch in jesus name that means you cannot afford to be lazy this fasting so the heavy eating stop the reason why you fall asleep and sleep the most because you eat heavy amen so from 6 p.m to that 12 midnight is light eating so that your spirit will be alive so even when you stay up to pray you are not tired some of you eat kinky Right after we finish six, seven. So by the time we finish, oh, let me go to sleep. Amen. Amen. So this fasting, I'm so excited. Amen. And we'll be meeting here at 6 p.m. Also, we'll be in-house. And there are days we will add midnight to it. Amen. As the Lord leads. Amen. We'll be here at midnight. Those that can be making it here, make it here in Jesus' name. Amen. Because if it's midnight that Ruth, was it Ruth? Got her, got her husband. So the, so, so, so the midnight, if, if we are praying for, for people to get married, that means that that hour is dangerous. If Ruth was sleeping and not go there at the midnight, she wouldn't have got her husband. And so if you are praying for marriage 21 days, <laughs> the midnight is going to be very important to secure the day. Amen. Amen. The days, you know, I believe that there are two nights within the day. Eh? From 12, so from 12 to 12, we will see two nights. So the night, which is the midnight coming, is dark. And then from six going is dark. Amen. So those are very important times in prayer. Amen. And so we must secure ourselves in these times in Jesus' name. Amen. And so please take note of everything that was taught to you. Some of you make sure that you're reviewing it and praying strategically concerning what you must pray for in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We give God praise. Uh, I want us to sow into the prayers, uh, the message that I was preached before there's a rotation of angels. Uh, I want us to do this right now. It's almost three, so you have two minutes. <laughs> you literally have two minutes before the, the rotation happens. Because you know, every time the preaching happens, there's an angel that is released. And every time we start opening prayer, there's also an angel on duty. And those that miss opening prayer, you miss something. Amen. So, in the name of Jesus, as you sow, may your prayer life, may the Lord really build those, those, those watches within your spirit that you'll be sensitive enough to pick them, even if it's 15 minutes. Even 15 minutes, you pray in tongues every of one, every time of those watches. You will 
be able to pray, you will not forget. You will not forget. May the Lord do as he has promised this church. Amen. The way I have made this midnight stuff, eh? I don't think I've caught that much revelation concerning the midnight than this year. So I believe this fasting is just going to be a something else. By the time we get to the last day, we will not fit in this place. If the world have not heard about KFC, they will hear about us in this fast. We will be in your face for 21 days. Someone say 21 days. They're like, who are these people? <laughs> Somebody say, who are these people? <laughs> Amen. So prepare yourself. Eat all your food now. Times and seasons. This is a season to feast. You better feast now because once we enter two weeks from now, you are done. <laughs> Amen. Let us... I want to welcome everyone here. If you are here for the very first time, I want to just welcome. How many of you are here for the very first time? Any first timers? Come on, let's wave at me. Can you please be on your feet with all humility? Can you be on your feet? Can you come forward? We want to, we want, we want to get to know who you, who you are, so that we can call you by your name and not just, hey, hi. We just want to know your name. So please come forward if you can, please, with all humility. Can you please hold the microphone and just, I just want to know their names and who invited them. Please come and face the church, please. Yes, hold the microphone, and your name and, all, and also who invited you, please. Uh, my name is Wilson. Uh, I just came with my girlfriend. Nobody okay, here. Us. My name is Wilson Tibia. That's my first time. Um, I go to um, the Voice of Jesus in Brooklyn. That's my home church. Thank you for being here. Amen. Hallelujah. My name is Michael Kisi. I'm here with my wife, my kids. My wife is Aretha Belson, my three kids. Um, we searched for the church on, online on Google, and we decided to pay you guys a visit today. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hello, my name is Norna Jules. I was actually invited by Angie Shanti. She told me about the church. I watched online for a few weeks. I'm from New Jersey, so I drove in today, and I love it. So thank you for welcoming me. Hello, my name is Chinwe Okafo. I came from Boston, Massachusetts. Um, my two daughters, um, they come to, um, to this church. Every Sunday, they drive like three hours to come, and I came today. I actually came when um, the church celebrated the anniversary, but I never got um, the opportunity to introduce myself. So, but I came today for my daughter's birthday, and I want to thank God for accepting her too into the doctorate program of physical therapy. They are both there, so thank God. I'm happy to be here today and to experience the blessings that came today through the, um, the words of the prophetess. Um, I was highly um, elevated and highly, um, I thank God for being here today for such Amen. a time as this. Thank you. Amen. Amen. What are we going to say to them? Welcome to KFT and God bless you. We have a gift for you, please. There's also forms that we must fill out. Please, we want to get to know you and also be able to reach out to you. So please fill out the forms right after church. Amen. And then the welcome team will have a little quick meeting with you right over here on my right hand side, right after church, so that they can also take the forms back. God bless you. Amen. You may have your seats. Amen. 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 Also, if you are here, if you don't know Jesus, before we leave, we want to pray with you. Maybe as the message was coming, you felt the prompting of the Holy Spirit to give your life to Christ. If you are here like that, I also I want to welcome you. I want to pray with you. Want to, I want you to now accept Christ. So please come forward. If you are here, you want to give your life to Jesus. Any one of you. Amen. Amen. You want to surrender your life to Christ? We have time for you. We want to pray with you. Amen. Amen. We give God praise that every one of you are saved. It's a good place to clap.
Amen. I want us to stretch forth our hands towards the woman of God. I want us to pray for her. That the grace that and the virtue that has left her, may the Lord replenish her. That the Lord will continue to use her, protect her, cover her, anoint her, and defend her. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Pray for her. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice, somebody. May Jehovah replenish you. The grace and strength that has departed from you. May the Lord restore that grace, restore that virtue. Restore that strength. In the name of Jesus, may the hand of the Lord continue to be upon you. And may the Lord begin to use you mightily. May he protect you and cover you and defend you in the name of Jesus. May the Lord show himself strong in your life and in your ministry. May Jehovah cover you and your children, your loved ones. May he be the defender of your life and of your ministry. May virtues be restored. May the oil increase. May the Lord increase the oil. May he increase the oil. May he increase the oil. In the name of Jesus. As you have water, may the Lord now cause you to be watered. May the grace that have departed from you be restored back now. May the virtues be restored. May the Lord renew your strength even as you have ministered to his people. And may the oil that is upon your life never go dry. May he refill it. May it be, a, may, may there, may it be an overflow. May the Lord cause an overflow of unction over your life. May God now begin to open your eye into the deep. May the prophetic anointing upon your life increase 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 may the lord defend you from today in jesus name somebody say a big amen come on shout a big amen shout a big amen amen we give god praise and give god glory now from today we will be we will, we will be we will take testimony before testimony. So you, if you have a testimony, you have to let the administration team know before the next Sunday, so that we will vet every testimony that comes up. Amen. We are growing as a church. Uh, and, and holding this mic is very dangerous. And so some of you, we need to check you to see what you're about to say before you hold the mic. Amen. Uh, I, saw a test, I saw a church, a, a, the lady was giving a testimony. The thing she was saying, the man of God had to take it quickly. The kind of thing she was saying, and it was sexual things, in the form of a testimony, he had to pull it. So we have to also, you know, there are things that God tap you on your shoulder. Yeah, so now we have to vert every testimony. And we have to learn how to do testimony quickly. Uh -huh. So um, those days of reading your entire book are over. Amen. So from next week on, uh, please, uh, the media team will let you know. It will post on the church page, know where to send it. And um, it will get it all done. Amen. They already done it. Amen. God bless you. Amen. So on that note, let's prepare ourselves. For the fasting, it's all preparation. Get yourself ready, because I'm excited. Amen. Let's invite our sister Raquel to give us the announcement. Amen.
bless you, Apostle and Prophetess. Amen. Very quickly, here are our announcements for the week. Coming up October 3rd to the 23rd, we have our annual marriage fast. Amen. I thought you would be more encouraged after the word that was released today. That has equipped us ahead of time for the fast. I'm glad some people are on their feet. Amen. 21 days for marriage and destiny fast. Amen. We are praying four times a day, 5 a.m., 12 p.m., 6 p.m., and then 12 midnight live on Facebook and YouTube. As Apostle mentioned, we will be in person for 6 p.m. So if you're able to join us, make sure to tune in. Amen. We have many people coming from all over the world. So as you already know about the fast, make sure to be intentional about inviting others to also join us. Amen. Amen. As Apostle stated, moving forward, our testimony structure is changing. So please note that you will have to email testimonies at kftchurch.com as displayed on the screen to share your testimony with us and you will receive an email back if you will be testifying that Sunday. Amen. Also, we will be having our grand opening coming up very soon. Amen. The grand opening of our new location. It's still our testimony that we don't get tired of telling, amen? Amen. And so make sure to save this um, grand opening date. It will be coming very soon, but keep it on your calendar so that you are aware if anything else changes, amen. Also, we will be having our new converts class coming up as well, amen? This is an eight week foundational course for those who are new members to KFT. And so if you have not yet signed up, please make sure to email us at info at kftchurch.com. If you've done so already, you don't have to email us again, but if you are newly joined um, to the ministry, make sure you email us at info at kftchurch.com, amen. Also, if you're joining us for the very first time, this is the headquarters of Kingdom Full Tabernacle International Ministries, amen? Amen. We have our second branch located in North Carolina. Amen. Where they be every Sunday at 1 p.m. Apostle has been going there this entire month for Jericho Hour at 10 a.m. We also have our third branch in the DMV area. Amen. Where we meet every Saturday at 1 p.m. For both of our branches, Bible Studies is live on Microsoft Teams at 8 p.m. It is strictly for members only. So if you're joining us, we want to inform you of our two branches. And if you're interested in joining any of them, you can email us at info at kftchurch.com. Amen. Lastly, our weekly programs for our headquarters are as follows. We have midday prayers every Monday through Thursday, amen, live on Facebook and YouTube. We're also officially in person now, so if you're in the area, you're welcome to join us for noonday prayers, amen. We also have midnight oil prayers every Monday through Thursday, live on Facebook and YouTube, amen. I thought you would be more excited that you don't have to pray on your own, but the Lord has created an avenue for us to pray corporately together, amen. We also have Bible studies every Wednesday at 8 p.m. live on Facebook and YouTube. And in person, we have our Fire for Fire Night service at 7 p.m. every single Friday. Amen. And the last Friday of the month, we meet for our all-night service, which is at 9 p.m. Lastly, every Sunday, we have Sunday service, which starts at 10 a.m. As always, if you're unable to join us in person, you can join us online. We really, really, really urge you to join us in person. But if you're unable to, we understand you can join us live on Facebook and YouTube. Amen. That's all of our announcements for today. And we're going to call upon our Papa of the house. Amen. 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 Please be on your feet as we close in. Prepare yourselves, every one of you. We are stepping into a highly spiritual time. Things God will begin to give you instructions, directions, show you the next step. And so be very sensitive, even from now, and even this week. 
this week until next week there's, there's a visitation of God coming and I wonder what the message has come at the right time because it will usher us into the prophetic word for the month amen, amen. amen. who remember the prophetic word for the month and what scripture and what, did, what happened in Haggai 2? No, no, what happened that day? Put that 18 there for me. <laughs> because something's about to happen, and, and you should expect. Because we just prayed that God to show us. He said, consider now from this day forward, from the 24th day of the ninth month, from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. So the 24th day, which is next week, Saturday, from now to the 24th, consider. And the ver next verse, go to the next verse. He said, I, I, I smote you with blasting and... Oh, Lord. Is, it, is the seed yet now on the barn? Okay, go to the next verse 20. He said, and again, the word of the Lord came unto Haggai again in the four and twentieth day of the same month. So on that particular day, on the 24th, there was two divine visitations. And this, from now to the 24th, be in the mood of an, uh, what, a visitation. It will not be one. It may not be two. It may be triple, quadruple. May the Lord usher you into multiple encounters. That means that the watches of visitations, you must keep it. Keep those watches within this week. And God will blow your mind. I say he will blow your mind. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And so tomorrow we are here for midday. Amen. Join us if you are around. If you are now working, make sure that you are here to pray. Or you can join us online. Amen. And uh, I'm excited for that. And at midnight also we will be on. Amen. And so God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. Lift up your hands to Jesus. Now, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your direction. We thank you for opening our eyes. We thank you for leading us into where we should be. We pray that, Lord, our prayer life will never be the same from today. We ask that everything that we receive today, let it be sown on a good ground. Let it bring forth much fruits in our lives. We pray for our children this week that you will protect our children. You will secure them. You will cover them. We pray that every child in this house will not be attacked by the enemy. Any child that is being afflicted by the devil today in the name of Jesus. We pray that as we have come in your presence, may that affliction cease. And may you touch every child, even those in Sunday school right now. May your protection be upon them. Those that were not able to make it here, May your protection be upon them and protect every soul, every soul under the sound of my voice. Those that, those that are in-house and also those that are watching online. May this week be a week of divine manifestations. May it be a, a week of divine encounters. May it be a week of marching orders. May you visit us and tell us what to do. Show us why things are the way they are. In the name of Jesus, I pray for blessings, blessings, and favor upon your people. May good news come from a far country. For everyone under the sound of my voice, may this week be the week of good news. I pray for those that are looking for jobs. May this week be a week of good news. May they secure a job this week. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, bless your people and protect your people. I cover everyone with the blood. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus over everyone and over their cars, over their houses. 
may they be exempted from any judgment of the enemy we thank you we bless you and we give you praise now may the lord bless you may the lord keep you may the lord shine his face upon you and be gracious unto you may the lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace joy love prosperity and gladness this week in jesus name somebody say amen, amen. say amen i want you to look at your neighbor and share the grace with your neighbor the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen amen god bless you all god bless you Visitors, as announced, we would love to meet you on this side of the room very, very briefly. Again, to our lovely visitors, we just want to meet you on this side of the room very briefly. Please, we humbly ask that you come to this side of the room. We would just love to meet you very briefly. <laughs>